Hey, here we go. Welcome back to another special edition of the Power Play Show. You, Hockey Coach Guru, Coach Frenchy, back and the boot tonight for the Montreal Canadiens because tonight we're going to announce the new GM and general manager of the Montreal Canadiens when Marc Bergevin is going to leave after the end of the, this season. I tell you right now, I know what's going to happen. Marc Bergevin is not going to sign a new contract is going to finish his season and then he's going to become the president of the hockey of the montreal the hockey national show he's going to become the president of the montreal canadian and then we're going to announce a new general manager a french canadian i cannot tell you yet you have to stay until the end of the show to know wh what is my prediction or who i would like the montreal canadian select But it would be really, really interesting about that. First of all, we welcome everybody. Thanks to be joining the Hockey Nation Live show. The, of course, the Power Play show. Uh, we have a really busy night uh, with a lot of news around the, the, the league. We had last another great hockey player, guys. Another player passed away today. It's just unbelievable. The last couple of weeks, we're losing legend, legend player uh, back to back to back. So another one left today. But I also have a couple of news, a video uh, from the friend team and uh, a new contract for a new player for the Chicago Blackhawks. And um, a couple of new news around the league, so I'm going to go through this. And tonight, for the Montreal Canadian prospect, we talk, we talk about Caden Primo, a goaltender, a future maybe goaltender number one of Montreal Canadian, be it really interesting how Caden is going to do for the upcoming season with the Laval Rocket. And uh, we will talk about day number two of the Montreal Canadiens at the training camp for the rookies camp. Of course, they start right now today at, um, at Travis, Michigan today, Traverse City, uh, Detroit play right now. At that moment, I'm talking to you with the Dallas Star uh, players. And then earlier, Toronto uh, play against Columbus. So we're going to talk a little bit about those games. But the most important things... We have to mention, welcome aboard. Thanks for joining the show. And the only homework, I maybe give you two. But the first one, of course, if you can click on the likes, that'd be awesome. And then you can want to share this uh, program of the Hockey Nation Live show. You can share it on your social media. So thanks to join us. Of course, I was online earlier and I see a couple of people. So welcome aboard. Of course, Mr. Joseph Laam directly from Houston, Texas. <laughs> Have a good one, William. Oh, talking about Mr. Brad Marchand's son back in the house. How you doing, buddy? How is your nose? How is the girlfriend? How she think about the really nice uh, evening you got last Saturday? I believe was the party. It was last week, right, Brad? Um, so I don't know if you did it or not, but uh, or it's a, this Saturday night. But hopefully you know it's looking better, of course. And uh, we have other people in the chat. Of course, we talk about Mr. Mr. The Wolf, directly from Toronto, Ontario. Mr. In our tap in the house tonight. Directly from, wow, directly from Westmont, Montreal, Mr. Canadian Giants in the house tonight. Sorry, sorry about that. The good news about this, Brad, is like you are really look like now a hockey player. So that's the good news behind that part. I understand maybe, you, you know, then maybe not for the girlfriend looking good, but at the end of the day, you're really now a really good, good Hockey player. Directly from Moncton, New Brunswick, Mr. Johnny Golden. Yes, I think at some point after the second period, Joseph, it was 5 to 1. Uh, I barely watched the game because I'm preparing the show, everything like that, and I'm doing more videos, so I had no chance. But uh, welcome also, Mr. Dixon, Automotive Group. In the house tonight. <laughs> Directly from British Columbia, Mr. Luke, back in the house tonight. <laughs> I 
directly from sometimes she's in Tampa, sometimes she's in Naples, sometimes she's in Fort Myers, or Bradenton, or Sarasota, or Marco Island. The only thing we know, she's always on the West Coast of the Sunshine State, Miss Kimberly Anna. I know you're on Facebook, the Shepherd, but usually it's Anna. So I apologize, Kimberly. At the end of the day, we know it's you at the end of the day. So, uh. <laughs> Johnny, directly from St. John, maybe, maybe Moncton also. You are New Brunswick. That's what he count about that. Talking okay, about Moncton, St. John, New Brunswick, guys. We heard, I heard about Sly today. Uh, he was at the McDonald's, get a Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't know. But he was at the McDonald's, say hi to about my video, talking about the Boston Bones. And he, he just wants to say to everybody, how his fans, uh, he said hi to everybody. He said, I'll be back, coach. Don't worry, I'll be back very soon. So I just want to give you the message of the Sly Abs guy. We miss terribly. He was, he's a great guy, and uh, we miss him, to be honest with you. So I just want to say, talking about missing a great guy, why not to welcome back the bod. Or the monkey, but sometimes he's the boy. But we know one thing, we call him Bud the Monkey Boy in the house tonight. Uh, Dixon is directly from Brockville, Ontario. Broke Vegas. Um, I will have to remember this. Honestly, Dixon, I'll be honest with you, I never thought you were going to be from Brockville, Brockville Ontario. Glad to see you guys, uh, to see with us. I uh, appreciate a lot. Talking about welcome back directly from Montreal, but leave now in Sudbury, Ontario. This is uh, this is cold over there. Mr. Christian Fanel back in the house. Yes, um, happy holidays for all the Jewish uh, today. Uh, many of my friends, a lot of people in South Florida. Uh, they are fast today. <laughs> I, I, you're not the only one. I got a lot of people text me today, tell me, Coach, I cannot eat today until 7 tonight. So, uh, OMG, she's back in the house. It's funny because I thought about you. J'ai pensé à toi vers 6h30 ce soir. Uh, il y a toi, il y a Corinne, il y a Nathalie, uh, il y a Kimberly, il y a Hélène, il y a, um, il y a plusieurs sont comme toi, euh, Adrienne, puis Kali, puis j'ai dit, « Hey, ça fait longtemps que je n'ai pas vu Karine. » Boom, Karine, elle arrive. <laughs> « Welcome back, Karine Marchand in the house. » Oh yeah, Brad is the king, buddy. But the monkey, you should know that. Brad is the king. He is the guy for all the women in Colorado right now. So, uh, yeah, you cannot... Compete with Brad Marchand, buddy. Of course. Um, do I miss someone? I missed uh, directly from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alan Barsness. I'm sure he's alive here, but he don't talk. But, he, <laughs> but Gadon, he's in the house, he's in the house tonight. I'm sure he's back in the house Gadon is going to be here for the for the quiz at the end of the show at 10 o'clock p.m. So, uh, boom, I'm Jerry, I'm Jerry. Oh, the keyboard is, I don't know what kind of keyboard you have right now. Alvary Fav Favredo, welcome aboard directly from Montreal. <laughs> Where I was born a long, long time ago. Montreal, Avery, welcome aboard. Thanks to join us. Don't forget to click on the likes and subscribe to the show. That'll be awesome. We're going to talk about the Montreal Canadiens in the next couple of days. We are so close to the season. I can taste it. Feel so the signs. I heard coach sing, ole, ole, ole. Of course, we're going to go this at some point. Hey, ole, ole, ole. But the best way is not the ole. It's U P I I I U P A U P I I I U P A. That's what we win at the end of the night. I'm saying this song when we eliminate a team, but uh, that's another story. We can talk about this. Um, um, hey, moi aussi, j'ai pensé à chaque fois cette semaine, mais le temps me manquait. Y a pas de problème. J'espère que tu vas bien, que tu fais bien, que tu es vraiment revenu. 
Donc, euh, super content de te voir, coach, mais moi aussi. Allez, Montreal, uh, yes, Christian, allez, Montreal, we'll see what's happening. So, uh, yes, that's happening. I don't know if I did not mention your name, I apologize. Uh, the flowing of the chat is moving quickly. But I just ask you, please don't forget to click on the on the likes. That'd be awesome. I really, really, really appreciate it. And that'd be great. Uh, allez, allez, allez. Et voilà. Et Brett, that's awesome. That's great. Um, otherwise, uh, in tap, Oli, Oli, here come Matthew Dash. <laughs> I don't know what Ronnie, Ronnie would consider. Welcome back, Ronnie Odette. I, I'm not sure if I click, if I said hi to you, Ronnie. We're missing. Coach, my heart is green. You forgot to name me. Here we go. I just said it. I, I was at the last, last 0.2 second before the, the red light turn. Before the end of the period, I did it before it was over. So, Ronnie, I don't know what's happening, but I did it before. Welcome back. <laughs> Coach. Coach got boo. Ça va mieux. Merci beaucoup. T'en es pour de gentil. Fait plaisir, Karine, que ça va bien. Je t'entends encore pour, la, pour ton, uh, ton partner of the gym le matin. Mais ça, c'est un autre story. Uh, Christian, uh, Ronnie, the quiz champ. Uh, Ronnie Audet is the quiz champ, to be honest with you, Christian, for the last two nights. But uh, the quiz of the champ is really, really in our tap. Have a difficult week in our tap last, this week, but uh, usually in our tap, he find a way to win most of the time. Uh, we'll see what's happening tonight. We miss his slides, so we have no there. Okay, my heart is better now, of course. We miss also Roger Delaney. I'm sure he's going to watch him football. For all the fans on NFL, uh, NHL football, uh, have a great game. I have no clue who's watching, <laughs> who is playing. I, I, I don't watch football, the TV. So maybe you guys, you can put a score, update people watching football. So I apologize for that one over there. So uh, a video review confirmed. You said running name and time. Here we go. I did it. I beat the time at the right time. I did it. So congratulations. I don't know. I see Adam. Adam, I'm not sure. The Thursday night, you have some. He's not always here the Thursday night. See if he's here. We said hi. Whoa, welcome back, Mr. Steve Raleigh. Welcome. Steve is the one who was there a lot of time when we all joined the season. Um, Steve is a great, great, great uh, member of the Family Hockey Nation Live Show. We miss you, Steve. Hopefully, your summer, uh, you have an amazing, great summer. Are you ready? And 26 days. Uh, When the puck drop to be back for the Montreal Canadian uh, uh, football, exactly something like that. Um, that's what he said at some point. A uh, coach, I gotta go. With my friend who is a female, not a girlfriend, just got broken up with. I gotta to help her, no problem. I apologize for that. Uh, maybe I'm going to change your name next time you come back. Brad, put your name, Doctor Phil. So maybe you're going to be the right person. You look like you have a good heart. So hopefully you're going to find a way to make her. Smiling, happier, and uh, when the door closed, one door closed, you have always a better clo a better door is going to be open for her. Just this, tell her this this is coming from Cold Frenchy. Adrienne Bourgo, back in the house. Uh, Adrienne, thank you so much. I know you're sick. Uh, hopefully, you're going to feel better. To just the fact you're sick, but you show up here. We really, really, uh, I'm really thankful about that. So thanks to be here. Dr. Brad to the Dr. Phil. Uh, Exactly, by the monkey. So, uh, Adrian, hopefully you're doing better. And uh, speed recovery, whatever you have. Uh, uh, thanks to be a part of the show tonight. Uh, here we go. So, hopefully I'm going to jump in on the news. Everybody's wait for the news. So, let's dive in all the news we have. I'm going to be a little bit behind. Uh, coach, uh, I was going to go with there are always more fish in the sea. You know, don't never forget to swim in. You never know what could happen in, under the water, by the way. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, John Gregor back in the house tonight. Where are you, Coach? Uh, I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, I'm right here. Here we go. Sometimes I'm moving left and right. So, uh, you know, sometimes I'm right here. Sometimes I could be there. I can go there. Oh, come back down here. Let's move on here. Here we go. Coach is funny tonight. Uh, Jason Demers, do you think he will address our defensive need? Not really. It's another defenseman, number four, five, three. And we have a bunch of the defensemen right now, uh, unfortunately, about him. Ellen Keeve from New Falkland, St. John. 
This is St. John. He had no mountain over there, John Golden and New Falkland. So I know I'm all right with her. She's from St. John. Welcome back. And number one fans of the Montreal Canadian, all the way on the northeast of the Canada. So, uh, Sumitozi. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> Don't forget to click on the right. That's a good one. Uh, that's a good one. That's awesome. That's, I love it. I love it. I love it. Anthony Manzano back in the house. Uh, number one fans of the Florida Panthers. Uh, you guys are amazing. Talking about the Mr. The Doggy Man. The Doggy Walker. Michael Robinstein in the house. Coach, in terms of for an officer, who should Montreal be contacting who has the consistency of playoff appearance and Stanley Cup championship? Um, good question. You know, I, I'm, I don't know the officer for you as general manager, but um, let me finish what I'm supposed to do. I will be back in a few minutes to tell you about this. 26 days, guys, before the season starts. Of course, I'm talking about Mats Nasloon. Uh, Mats is a great hockey player. He's going to be very close to do a feedback, Mat, Mats Nasloon. Uh, yesterday, we did, of course, um, Mike Bussy. So don't forget to get this part. Um, and also, we talk about Martin St. Louis. I put both together, guys, because honestly, I don't know who is, a, <laughs> who is, a, who is, big, is bigger or taller between both of them. I don't know if it's St. Louis or Matt Nasloon, but the only thing we know is this. Whatever they was small, the producers won the great hockey player in NHL, St. Louis and Matt Nasloon. Uh, two amazing, great career in NHL. It was always, you know, me as a small guy, I'm always admired people like them uh, get, find a way to make something special and never... Uh, face to adversity challenge. They never stop to have that kind of perseverance and never give up and give everything. And big dream, dream big is the key behind that over there. Dixon said, are we going to get a third center? No, I think he's going to be on the end turn at that moment, Dixon. I really believe they're going to try to get Jake, uh, Jake Evans. So like that. Uh, Dominic Trump today is on his interview at La Price and French said, you know, worst case, Jonathan Drouin could be play center at some point. He really believe at Jonathan Drouin right now. Um, I, I, you know, we have to give him a chance. We have to prove to us he can play at that league. It would be really interesting to see Jonathan Drouin uh, at that moment over there. Um, it's a young keeper, no school today. Yes, exactly. About that one over there. So 26 days about that one. Um, tonight, about 7 o'clock, the Chicago Blackhawks sign. For a three years ELC. What is ELC coach? Of course, it's an Andre level contract, eight seventy thousand uh, dollars. The thirty two overall pick um, in twenty twenty one. He signed a contract. Northern Allen. Really very interesting about what he's going to do for the upcoming uh, year with him. Um, so um, yes, so the Chicago Blackhawks signed him for a three years contract. Uh, Today, the NHL announced today the Heritage uh, Classic Hamilton 2022, where the Tiger Cats play on the CFL. If you are from Canada, you know what I'm talking about. If not, uh, it's, a, it's a sport, play football, like NFL, but not like NFL. But they try to be like NFL, but they are not like NFL. But that's another subject. We can talk about this. So, the Toronto Maple Leaf and the Buffalo Sabres going to play a game over there January and March 13, 2022. So it will be really interesting about that one over there. Michael, uh, here we go. Running over that uh, size uh, coach uh, does mean nothing because all the small guys give me more trouble. You're absolutely right about that. That's what he did all the time. Uh, the Los Angeles King have signed the defenseman Cameron uh, goes. I don't know, go see, go see. To a professional trial, he was uh, drafted by the Tampa Bay Lightning a couple of years ago. So he's going to have a, a three a PTOs. He's going to be at a training camp for the Los, Los Angeles Kings, uh, the defenseman. Talking about uh, R.I.P. today, another great legend um, pass away, uh, Lou 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 Angudi, uh, the first captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, played ten years season and twice with the Stanley Cup final for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, 
died and passed away at 83 years old. Another great, um, you know, uh, that I feel sad, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know it's all the time about COVID, everything like that, but look, that's another one. We lost also uh, Tony Espoisto a couple of weeks ago, and, and the list is getting longer and longer for the, uh, for this year, at least for the people in NHL. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is. That's live, right? So that's what happening about that one over there. Bonsoir, Région Beaulieu de la British Columbia. <laughs> Buffalo, Toronto, yes, that would be great. Uh, la Shabbat Ovabad, uh, la Shabbat Ovabad. Uh, here we go. Talking about, uh, bonsoir, Réjean. Merci, Michael. Uh, talking about PDO. No, it's for, not for Montreal Canadiens. But the ex-defenseman number 32, Eric Gustafsson, um, is going to have a PDO with the New York Islanders uh, for the upcoming season. My question is this part. How Eric Gustafsson can fit in the Barry Trot system? <laughs> like, I'm... I'm questioning myself about that. So how can he play for Barry Trotz? Because Eric Gustafsson is not a defensive player, and you can see during the, the, during the playoff uh, how, how many times he turned around the puck, everything like that. So uh, really interesting to see him over there. I don't know. I don't give him a chance, but maybe he would, he would maybe sing him. But I don't see uh, what could happen. Uh, talking about a PDO, this happened yesterday, but I'll never talk about him. Uh, Scott Wilson, uh, ex Buffalo Sabres, going to try with the Seattle Kraken uh, for the upcoming training camp. That's another one happening. Other that. Do we have something else? Uh, this is the big news, but it's the big news. Every team are excited. They are on the national, every time like they call the national. But today, the ESPN, oh, on, honestly, the the NHL released the schedule of the TV games uh, on ESPN, on TNT, Turner Sport, on the live stream, Hulu, ESPN Plus, ABC National, and all kind of stuff like that. So, uh, you know, how we can follow the game, guys. Take, uh, for the American people, I'm not knowing Canadian, but for us in America, if you live in America, uh, you have two ways. You can sign up the, the bottle package deal with Hulu or ESPN Plus. The Hulu one, I pissed off last year. The game is about one minute behind. So for me, I do the play by play. It's very hard about Hulu. Um, I I'll usually use uh, the NHL network. Uh, that's where usually I go. But now ESPN and ESPN Plus, you can get those games also. So it'll be really, really interesting about that. And uh, of course, October 12th, uh, the ESPN do the double header. So we're going to do the first night, the double game, uh, play-by-play -play with Cole Frenchy. We're going to go to bed late, but hey, why not? i will be great about that one over there. Um, uh, I, Mike, uh, I think Pedri, it's 55 points. They should worry where the rest is come from on the back hands. Uh, good evening, Dan Asham. Yes, Ronnie, I agree with you. Gazerson is just an emergency help. You know, top. Yeah, Scott Wilson, partner, legend, but a monkey. Valentino abs back in the house tonight. Uh, thanks to be joined. Don't forget, guys, to click on the likes. Uh. And uh, what I want to talk to you, Dixon, uh, P355 point. So that gave you about 13 goal, 14 goal, 12 goal. That gave him 40 assists. Um, Jeff Petri is going to get 44 points next season, uh, 12 goals and uh, 22, uh, 32 assists. That will be the max I believe he can get. I, I don't see Petri go over 50 points. Uh, I could be wrong. The only thing maybe he's going to get is going to get a little bit more ice time because really now he becomes the defenseman number one. So that's maybe the only way I can see this a little bit better. But uh, we'd be interested in what Jeff Petri is going to do. NHL back in the house tonight. <laughs> the number one fans of the Hockey Nation Live Show. We miss you, buddy. Uh, I know we did not get busy. We are busy, so we don't connect together. But uh, just want to remind you, we you are always, always, always... Uh, we never forget you at the end of, at the, at the, end of the show. Uh, he hit 40 this year. Uh, yes, but he did not hit a lot the last 28 games of the season, <laughs> Dixon. Uh, he was stuck for 28 games with zero goal, uh, by the way, Dixon. He really struggled after an amazing great start in NHL. 
And uh, that's another plur, I believe, because the the cha- the channel, the new schedule now, back like normally, I don't see him, um, you know, over 50 points. Uh, and on top of the 15, 20 gold, he's going to be number one over there. Uh, the reason why I don't see that kind of gold uh, in our tap, because you're going to see Caulfield score and you're going to see Mike Hoffman score on power play. So I believe he's not going to reach that kind of 15 plus, to be honest with you. That's awesome, Ronnie. Great to know that. Hey, Coach Justin Zubi. Come on, so up. Justin, show up for the first time yesterday. Justin, Justin, uh, show up, and uh, we thank you, buddy. Best show around where we you are, really. NHL, always a pleasure. Always nice talking like that to, about us, everything like that. Uh, today was uh, another day of the 30 day team and 32 days uh, series by the Hockey Nation Live Show, by also the co-host called Frenchy. Today we talk about the Boston Bruins. Uh, honestly, so what do you have, like, you know, Different pick, different player with different uh, jerseys because they all new player now for the Boston for upcoming season. Nick Foligno, uh, Linus Olmark, and of course Eric Arley, Ola, and uh, Greg Smith played with the Boston Bruins last season, his first year. And of course we can talk about Taylor Hall and Derek Forbord. Uh, you know what I mean? And you can add more players inside that organization. It would be really, really interesting about the temp, uh, for the Boston Bruins, what they're going to do for the upcoming season. And when you, if you want to see what's going on during those videos, we talk about everything inside that team. Uh, who is out, who is in the roster, the 32 years old, older, the 23 younger, the stat, what they accomplished the year before, the last five years. Guys, look, Boston Bruins, they all make the last five years the playoff, uh, that's a machine about that. The staff we have there, and then finally we add also um, the, the the lineup, everything like that. So it's great to see this. If you want to know more about friend team, I think that's the way to do that. That's the way to watching about this. Uh, has anyone else has ever subbed to NHL Live? Uh, yes, I do. Um, yes, uh, Christian, uh, the NHL Network, everything like that. Uh, bon, faut que je sorte mes lunettes. Oh, OMG, Karine. Car- je m'excuse, mais c'est comme ça que ça vaut. Tu veux savoir, je vais t'en envoyer montrer un autre. Uh, tonight, uh, NHL, uh, Mont- uh, NHL, Montreal Canadian, every night we present a new prospect player. And uh, tonight is a goaltender, Caden Primo, number seven or eight on my prospect list of 42. Uh, Primo last season with Laval have 11-4-0, a save percentage of 0.909, and a goal again average of 2.10. Uh, have a great year with the, the, the Laval Rocket. Obviously, it did not turn well with the Montreal Canadiens. I think you have 1 2 0 with a 0. 4, uh, 4 point uh, something goal again average and a save percentage of 0. 0.84 and 9. So it was not really good, to be honest with you. They have already top six strong. Uh, you're absolutely right, Justin, about them. Uh, go, abs, go again for him. I would like to see Mike Bacock to replace uh, Bergevin. Mike Bacock is never going to be a general manager, uh, Ronnie, to be honest with you. Mike Bacock is the only way he's going to do is behind a bench, but you're never going to see him behind a desk as a general manager. Uh, I can promise you that about that because Mike is not what he's looking for, to be honest with you, at that moment. So let's talk about um, Kevin, and I apologize. I make a little mistake. I'm going to disappear for that one over there. But um, listen, uh, Kevin Primo, one of the hardest jobs in hockey has probably been a goaltender at Montreal Canadian with the legends uh, as Jacques Plante, Ken Dryden, George Vizina, Patrick Roy, and there I said Carey Price living up to the middle. He's is really, is really right about that one over there. I think, you know, uh, the former director of goaltending, Stefan um, White, expressed that Caden Primo would require at least one, another 150 start in NHL and AHL before he'd been ready. The slow, steady approach with a young goaltender might be the best route right now. And again, I think at that moment with, Pri- uh, with Carey Price and also Jake Allen, I think Primo is going to be two more years at Laval Rocket before really he show exactly what he can do in NHL. That's a good way. Now, remember, a lot of goaltender guys in the NHL stop up 
at 24, 25, 26 years old. So yeah, no rush to push him. I think get him a couple of games that'd be great, but don't expect too much about Caden Primo and the next seven. Uh, non, bah, bien sûr, il n'y a pas de problème. Karine, je vous ai parlé que moi aussi, j'ai des problèmes de, de vision euh, à droite par gauche de ce côté-là. Donc, euh, là, après that last game versus Toronto was good, not good. Et, if you could pick one player, we could have a break, a breakdown for Montreal. Who would pick uh, Johnny Golden? If the artist job in Montreal, he is the coach. Uh, uh, yes, but um, the coach never get boo behind the bench. During the game, they will boo the goaltender. So uh, that's what the reason I said that. That's what the reason they mentioned this. You know what I mean? They were never said boo the coach uh, behind the bench. Now, the pressure is there for the coach, but the, goal, the goaltender is the, really the one where the fans are usually stop on him. The strength of Primo is a good goaltender. Technically sound is quick and often square to the shooter, relying on a good foundation, butterfly technique, and athleticism. Uh, so uh, remember, he's the son of the key primo ex Flowers, Philadelphia Flowers, a great hockey player in NHL. Kelly was also a seven uh, round pick for the Montreal Canadiens. I think it was 199 or 207, something like that. He has all the chance to evolve a little of the good program through his year. Uh, first with the USHL to the NCAA with the North, Northeastern University. And now with the Laval, the Laval Rockets. So that's a good good way about that one there. Guys, I'm not going to go through all those stats. You, know that? you can check again the video. You can click right now on the, on the post and read about that one there. And finally, I have two more things to go. Uh, is it when, uh, weak? Where is really weak? That's something you can learn about this. The good thing you have a great frame is a 6'4". So that's going to help him and the future, to be honest with you. Uh, behind that part of there for the key primo uh we have a new subscriber um rj hi here we go welcome aboard then for the projection for him i will finish with this one it's clear at this point primo has the tool to earn a spot in any shell but the kennedy won't rush him of course we have price in and uh and uh Adam. the question is either is would be a 1A or 1B. Primo need more time in the American Hockey League, like I mentioned by this one. I think you're not going to see him permanently about 23, 24. That's where really, I believe we're going to time. He's going to bring him about that one over there. So um, still two more years in the American Hockey League. That would be the best play, the right things to do. Um, the hardest job in Montreal is uh, Ronnie Odette, is my opinion, is a general manager. Uh, and uh, because of the US fan expectation, absolutely right. Uh, hi, hi, Jay, hi. Uh, Christopher, 1%, I'll be the many players don't want to come in Montreal because the tax, that's another subject and another story about this. Obviously, absolutely right about this one over there, for sure. Here we go. This is a subject of the night. We have about 20 minutes to talk about this. And, you know, I barely thought one morning with Michael DeVillain a couple of weeks ago, uh, about two, three weeks ago, we talked about Mike Bergevin. I feel like he's not happy. I feel like he, he don't have that kind of the, the body language. I don't know if the fact is now nine years he's with the Montreal Canadian. I cannot tell you the reason behind that one over there. But uh, I believe um, he have a contract for now at three years uh, on the paper. But uh, I'm not sure if he's going to do it. I've been honest with you. I would not be surprised. He put this contract on the on the <laughs> on the on the under the desk and waiting to see what the season it look like. I really believe he's never going to be uh, fired by the Montreal Canadiens, but I would not be surprised he stay inside the organization at the end of the year and Molson uh, create a a new job as a vice president or special consultant, general manager, or president of the Montreal Canadiens, who had never been sent Ronald Curry, uh, Curry I believe, uh, I would not be surprised. And then that will, he would be a part of the selection to find a new general manager. And then I put some face over there here. Why? Because I, each one of them are involved at some degrees in front of the team, organization, and NHL at that moment we speak. Only Patrick Awa is not in NHL at that moment. So um, 
Johnny Golden, uh, welcome AJ coach. Is it Charlie Lindgren done at the future Golden in Montreal? I really believe him and McNavid not going to go nowhere and their ERC on the goaltender. I believe in my book uh, about that. Love those phases, uh, Joseph. Yeah, it's funny to see this. Um, you know, uh, you have three face smiling and one not smiling, and that's what usually is temper. Uh, about that, but that's another story. We can talk about it. Stretzik back in the house. Uh, Cole Francis should be the next GM of the Habs. <laughs> I would like to, but uh, nah, that's not going to happen. But uh, yes, uh, I think Patrick Watt should be the next GM. He said Patrick Watt should not go replace Berger. He cannot control his machine. It's good for the young players. Sir. Uh, yes, you know. And uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more about this. So, so. What was happening there? You know, yeah, maybe other people. First of all, don't forget to click on the likes. But yeah, maybe other GM around the NHL or on the CHL or around the world, whatever they are. The only thing, the Montreal Canadian, because they was born with French Canadian, they're always looking. Someone can speak English and can speak French. This is the first recommendation request as a general manager, if you can, if you cannot speak French, you're not going to get a job. That's simple. So, of course, I can put maybe some pe sometime people put Vincent Danfoss as the manager with the Montreal Canadiens. Some put like Guy Carbonneau, everything like that. And I, the list could be about 20 behind what I put tonight. But tonight, I want to focus on four people. Three of them are goaltender. One is not. But at some point, they are all born in Montreal or Quebec, the La Belle Province of Quebec. And that's the reason they are on that picture tonight. And I'm going to give you um, each one of them uh, what they do right now and where are they and what they can do for the Montreal Canadian. And at the end of this, I'm going to ask you what do you think, what they should select, everything like that. So that will go and happen about that one over there. Um, about this. Uh, coach will become the app GM. Excellent point. Mathieu Dash would be the best choice for you know, Inotap. Patrick Watt, next GM, can you money go apps? Go. Mac Dash as GM, but on, also eventually as a go GM. You see, that's that's the point. He, he, my point here is like, I'm, I'm not the one, an expert to tell you exactly what he should be. But it's great to have a live stream like that. We can sharing what we're thinking. I a great IG. I, I, I'm going to call hi. It's easier for me. Uh, I think Martin Brodeur would be a good fit. See, Martin Brodeur, Martin Dash, Patrick Arroy. Uh, we have Vincent Danfors. We just need enough people to sign the coach friendship for Jim Pitson. <laughs> Here we go, Stretzik. How you doing, buddy? How's Everett over there? Coach speaks French and knows his hockey in LA, so go, coach, go. Uh, <laughs> would be interesting. If Justin Trudeau lose his election, I put him as GM, Ronnie. That's funny. Uh, and it shall do all Canadian team want a French speaking GM or just Montreal? Uh, just uh, do all Canadian, no, only a Montreal, uh, Joseph. Uh, it's a joke, Ronnie, I know that. Why would you, Bobby, you leave Florida? Top? Here we go. So, behind me, guys, is Roberto Luengo. Great goaltender in NHL, you know, carrier with Islanders, Vancouver, right? Great over there. And then uh, Florida Panthers. Uh, organization, everything like that. Um, and it's funny because the two years ago, he was named as an assistant general manager. At first, he was on the, like, you know, an alumni player. He was like someone talking about the Flora Panthers, everything like that, and, uh, and the community, everything like that. He lived in Parkland, one of the great location um, in uh, South Florida. I uh, have a great, nice house. The family grow here. You have the kids. Everything look good. It's great. You love Florida. You enjoy Florida. And then suddenly, when the job as the gym was open, they select Bill Zito. He lost his job as a central manager. He became the guys in charge about the new committee of goaltender with Rob Dallas. So he's in charge with his brother, uh, Roberto Luando. Uh, Luengo and also charge at the goaltending in between that. He does other function inside the organization, but it's this. Now, he completely have all the, the, the recommendation. We can do everything. He, he speaks French. He was born in Montreal. He knows hockey. He's a goaltender. Everything like that. So, can he become the, the, 
Can he become uh, a German German twelve? Possible. I'm going to go through the list. At the end, I will tell you why not, why, why not him, why not, why, why him. I would be in my selection about that one over there. Um, I'm Kenna. I am too. Patrick Award will be the next year. Leon Jalba, welcome aboard. Um, I'm losing a couple of chat right there. Uh, Coach, uh, do you think Benjamin has done a good job at gym so far? Three comments about him having a gambler mind, mindset, you know that. Um, on my book, he did a good job. He was nominated three times for GM, everything like that. In nine years, he did overall a great job. It's funny you talk about this this way because people will say, no, he did a good job. We didn't win the Stanley Cup. He did not blah, blah, blah. It, I understand. But I can give you all the moves he did since he behind the desk of the general manager. You're going to find overall, I think people are really hard because a lot of people are thinking only at the outcome. When I'm thinking about what he accomplished. And for me, I think overall he did a good job. Great job. You're never going to have a great or become greatness if you don't win the Stanley Cup. But great job, right? He did for me a good, good job behind this. Uh, hi, son. I get it. I am too. Uh, probably what would be the next GM? How are you doing? How about Gil Aflar? He is too, uh, not too old, but Gil Aflar have a problem, health, everything like that. I don't see. See you, bud. Uh, and by the way, you are the next app GM. I saw. I glad I went on back in the house. We are here, John. Uh, Lafla is back in cancer. Then exactly, you got it. Do you think it's longer was the gym? I think Patrick Well would not be happy. Rani, by coach, I've been dormi. Bonne nuit, Nicolas. J'espère que c'est bien célébré ta fête hier. Donc, merci. Mais je m'excuse. Je t'ai pas vu ton nom au début du show. Donc, si je t'ai oublié, je m'excuse, uh, Nicolas. I have an opinion on one of these GM prospects. Uh, Joseph, go abs, go. Salut, Nico, Leo, Jalbert. Je pense que le prochain lien de Montréal sera Bob Ackley, Nicolas de Combi. The problem with Bob Ackley never been a, a general manager. And like uh, someone mentioned, someone else earlier, um, like Mike Bacock, example, I don't see Mike Bacock to become a GM also. Coach, I think you need to figure out who has the best suit in the GM selection, who has tiebreaker. Yes, you have to f have an amazing, great uh, suit uh, to become uh, the next one. Do you think Martin Martin would be a concession as well? He does have experience. You know, that is a great one with there. Uh, the problem with Martin Martin, he's with right now Anaheim Ducks. I believe he's been there for many, many years. I don't see him to come back in Quebec. Uh, we know he was involved with the, que the Quebec Nordic for many years, and then he find a way to be, I believe it's Anaheim Ducks. So, and he's been there for years after year. I don't see this. But he, he have a lot of experience. He also, he been to the bottom. So I think for, as a manager, it's important you've been like a scout and you learn that you become a director of scouting and development, everything like that. You go from the bottom, you go all the way up. And that's, I think that's a great way about this one, about that. So Robert Lulongo is the one. Number two behind in the back of the back is Matt, 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 Matthew uh, Dash. Uh, Dash left the Montreal Canadian like three years ago, I believe, at least two years ago and joined the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was close with Julien Brisebois. Uh, they have uh, some connection because Br Brisebois was a Montreal Canadian. And if you find that, uh, Mathieu Dash is about, what, 38, 37 years old now. And, um, you know, he's learning from what he is with the Tampa Bay Lightning at some point. He's not an instant general manager. He's a part of the organization, yep. But I think at some point he could become a general manager in NHL uh, and I think Montreal could become someone very close about that. We'd be very interested in what Dash could be uh, behind that part over there. Who was the guy that was in the? He was on earlier. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell. How about Gilafleur next GM? Do you think Coach? Uh, no, Gilafleur is sick, Dan, and uh, never going to go back in the hockey anymore. Don't show it as the best suit, but he's not on the list. Uh, Joseph, yeah, that's another kind of suit we're talking about. Uh, Karen Dan Lafleur is sick, uh, exactly. And the guy in the middle with a big smile is Martin Brother. So Martin Brother was like, you know, play all his career with the New Jersey Devils. Then he decided to go with St. Louis Blues. He played a bunch of game, I don't know. And then after that, he decided to retire. Then the St. Louis Blues have hired him uh, to be a part of this organization. And, and with the hockey business operation. We tell you that he'd been there for years, like three, four years, uh, learning about the job, and he loved it. Martin had a great interview with uh, NBC Sport at some point, and he was talking about how he loved it. 
two years ago, he got a new job with the New Jersey Devils, come back over there. And I thought at some point when the job was open, um, they would, he would get involved, he would get the job. And then finally, Tom Fitzgerald get the job, and then Martin did not get it. So for me, Martin Bradard could become a general manager for the Montreal Canadiens at some point. He speaks French, I'm from Montreal, played junior, Saint Saint. You have some kind of speak, you know, speak English, speak French. So it's uh, another GM could become a GM for Montreal. Finally, on the right, the guy with uh, no smile is the Patrick Arroy. When I see this face like this, I see passion and love about the game. That's not the kind of passion you have, but that kind is a kind who he is right now. Uh, Patrick Arroy has been in hockey as a coach in NHL, right? He's been manager, owners, and coach, and the QM. If you turn that, um, that's where he is. If you turn that, that's where he accomplished for many, many years. He left the Rampal, went to NHL, left the Quebec, uh, the Avalanche after a disagreement about Radzulov uh, with Joe Sakic, come back home. Then he come back with the Rampal. He get a job over there. If you turn that. Then a couple of months ago, he have a, re a renegotiation, uh, reconciliation with the Mario Tremblay, make a big statement over there. He was at Montreal Canadiens in the, in the large and the uh, upstairs and the suit and the suite with the ex Montreal Canadian Guy Lafleur, Van Cornouille, blah blah blah. So Patrick Roy now is getting closer with the organization Montreal Canadian. That's all the four selections we have here in front of me. Of course, someone mentioned Vincent Danfoss. Uh, Vincent Danfoss. Someone said Martin uh, Madden. Madden. Can Julien Brisbois left his job? Left his job with a Tampa Bay and come with Montreal Canadiens. Can Pierre Dorion does the same thing? No. So those names around the league could become also involved with the Montreal Canadiens. But again, I don't want to make a list of ten tonight. I just tried to find four quickly. We can discuss tonight all together. I know the chat is moving quickly here, and I apologize. I cannot follow everything about this one over there. Let's my a little bit more. Uh, Don't try. Shout, Patrick. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, the reason, Shal Patrick, it's um, it's easy. Um, Mike Bergeron, uh, maybe is going to retire. So I not said he's going to be. We're going to have someone right away. Uh, if you follow hockey a little bit, you're going to talk a lot about discussion about trade someone, trade rumor, trade bait, everything like that. So that's the reason we discuss tonight about maybe the next general manager and Montreal Canadian. It never going to happen. So it's now we're going to say tonight we select someone who's going to be the general manager. So that's in hockey, you assume, you do some prediction. It's like you predict tomorrow Montreal play against Boston. You say, oh, Montreal Canadian went for two. Well, now you can tell me, yeah, but you don't know who's going to be goaltender every time that. So that's assuming. That's the reason we talk that way. And that's what about this part, that discussion about that. I never said I assume me, Mike Bergevin is on his last season with a Montreal Canadian. He have a contract at three years. I don't expect him to sign for three more years. The way I talk that way is his body language after a press conference when they got eliminated. His body language when he talk about the Logan Mayu. That's body language when after that he talk about uh, the, um, when he come back for the off season about uh, Jesperi Kokenemi. That's filled this way. Now he have a contract of three years on his hands, and he did not sign yet. That's the reason we talk that way tonight. Hopefully this is helping you. Hello, coach. Hello, chat room. Main girl hockey. Welcome aboard. Uh, the quiz start in eight minutes, buddy. We're going to see what happened in Atlanta. Um, uh, Christian, general manager, player, love living in St. Louis, brother, does not want to move from there. It's funny, Joseph, you said that. I don't know why St. Louis is really a track for players. Um, I've been there. It's a Missouri, you know, the bridge, everything like that. I, it's a Midwest. I'm not been, I, I don't like Midwest, but look like people enjoy St. Louis. Tyler Bozak did not want to move from St. Louis, everything like that. There's so many. David Perron loves St. Louis also. So that's what happening about him. About so um, would be interesting to see that. Um, general manager main goal. Okay, I Christian uh, do not think is Dan Drum with Mario would ever get Patrick Ovechkin for his ever. 
Uh, the picture of the bat was taken while looking at Mario Tremblay. That's funny one. At that time, he <laughs> and it's funny you said that that way. Hey, Claudia, how's the weather? Uh, we turned that. That was about my girl, Michael Ogeta. Can you Michael Ogeta? Yes, thank my girl. How long is it a contract? Uh, how long is it a contract? I believe it was a three years contract. Uh, by the monkey about that would be really interesting. Um, about what happened about him. So, what do you think about this, right? Right? Lou and Go in my book, he loved Parkland. His family come here. He loved to be in Florida. Um, I don't see. Roberto Luango accept a job in Montreal. It's not on my head. Martin Brother, I feel the only way Martin Brother is like he's on the hierarchy of the, the, the New Jersey Devils, at least for three years, four years, I don't see Tom Fitzgerald to get fired over there. At Tom Fitzgerald does an amazing great job with New Jersey Devils. I don't see. Can Brother accept a job in Montreal? Possible. But I don't see him to do it. That's give me two. Matthew Dash, Patrick, Patrick what? Dash. My only problem with him, he had not much experience. But, Mac Bergeron had no experience as a GM when he came with the Montreal Canadian. Can Matthew Dash have that chance for the Montreal Canadian open the door and show to him he can become a general manager? I don't know that answer. But I think Mark Matt. Uh, Mathieu Dash could be in consideration at some point to become a general manager on the Montreal Canadian. On the flip side, Patrick Roy. Now, a lot of people talk about his temper, talk about his behavior, talk about everything, talk about how much he takes everything like that. I believe in life, people change. I believe in life when you get older, like I become older, you get more wisdom, more experience. You, you change, your perspective of life is changing, everything like that. I don't know, honestly, what Patrick what can do behind the general manager. Honestly, I don't have no clue. But I think the Patrick what you saw in the past, in Quebec, uh, in, Quebec in uh, Colorado, and as a goaltender, and as a goaltender in Montreal, and if you talk that, it's not the Patrick what he is today. That's the feeling I have about him. I don't think so. He will be there. The only thing we know, the next general manager... Whatever who he is, he's going to have pressure. He's going to be the same shoes what Mike Bergeron is right now. Uh, before it was Bob Gainey. I can go all the way like this. The pressure on Montreal is high. The expectations are high. And whatever you do, you're going to be criticized. Whatever you decide to do something, people will scream against you. Whatever you do a great things, some people will not like it. We can go with Piquet Subban, we can go with Pachurity, we can go with many traits, many actions, Mac Bergeron does, the draft pick, everything like that. That's, the, the, that's the, what he works in Montreal. So tonight, the, the conversation we was, who's going to be the next GM? I don't know, honestly, but this left to you what you believe you're going to become a GM. In my book, I think my, the front runner for me is going to be Matt Dash. Um, that would be my selection for me on the, between all four. Uh, I think um, Young learn more about the analytics and more, more about the development. The Young, he's been a hockey player also. If you know that, I feel Matt Dash feel more the new generation of hockey coach, uh, hockey administration, and I believe that would be the right set for me because I believe now, like Carl Dubas, have more people surround themselves with the right people about that. Now, can they go and turn like Scott Melemby, Rod Ramage, and they have other people around right now with Mac Bergevin or assistant general manager. Can they go around them? Possible. But Scott Melemby, I believe one day is going to become general manager somewhere in NHL. Unfortunately, he does not speak French. That's the only problem he got over there. So I tried to catch up with everything on the chat before we move on. I can go this way here. Um, I like the stream earlier. I agree, Scott Steven, his family really want to stay in St. Louis too, Joseph. But Joseph said, when he was in me, he said, I'm all here when we won the cup. He will be retired. It was his words. Five and five, Ronnie, hello. I think Dash would be a great choice, but it would be advisable to have him mentor under such house. We can learn the rope in Montreal. Yeah, of course, he can be around with people around him. And I think sometime, uh, Mike Bergeron, when he came, remember, he got, um, 
oh my God, he got uh, not only Scott Menembe, but uh, the guy from Buffalo, ex NHL player. Then he left for the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, for his name, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, you, he, he can have Matthew, Matthew Dash, and then he can surround themselves with other people around him, and that would be something. And then also be to be with Julien Brisebois for two, three years, that helping him to become better also. That would be my point. Prado would be an awesome gem for Montreal. Thought he loved Montreal. Joseph, uh, yeah, possible. Um, it's been me and our top a while Ronnie step up. I'm agree with you, Coach Karin. Rise to the top, Ronnie, about Patrick Aware would be the most entertaining GM of his selection, Joseph. That would be interesting. For those four prospects, where would be my pick? He cannot hide his love. Our key is down. Yes, his heart is there. The passion he has, of course, he is for sure. Hello, Coach. Hello, the bird raven back in the house. Bon, je veux enlever mes lunettes. Karen, et voilà. Là, tu vois le lum et le lum. Uh, Raven, it's been a minute. Hi, uh, Clinton. That's be great. And we talk that. So we catch up with all the things. And we are almost there. Of course, what you're talking about, coach, uh, we all go there. So that we talk about the general manager. And it, of course, we don't know what Mac Bergeron is going to do, like um, our friend said earlier, uh, Patrick, because at the end of the day, he have a contract. We don't know if he's going to sign up or not. We don't know if it's his last season. But we're not talking about the subject is off-season. And uh, that's the reason why we talk about Mac Bergevin. And for me, um, some people say he will sign the contract at the beginning of the season. I don't see Mac Bergevin for three more years. Honestly, for four years. So you have this year plus three. I don't see Mac Bergevin do this. It's my, it's my feeling I have. So that's what happened about this one over there. So uh, look, it's 9.53. Oh, it's not 9.53, coach. What are you talking about, coach? Of course, it is. It is time. Can we find a song? The song, we cannot find a song anymore. Quiz, Frenchy Quiz, the number one on YouTube channel. Welcome back for everybody. Hopefully you are ready to rock and roll tonight. Another great Frenchy Quiz tonight. Can you win? Can you become the winner of tonight? We'll see what's happening tonight. Let's go question. Ronnie, I understand. If I win, it's great. If I lose, it's great for me. It's to be with you all. Great comments about this, Ronnie. I appreciate a lot. Thanks to join us also. But I'll be honest with you, Ronnie, you surprised me the last two nights. You stepped up your game the last couple of nights, to be honest with you. Um, Karen, don't go nowhere. If anybody wants to reach me, you can email me first at this email. Here we go. You can reach me. Don't forget to click on the likes. That'd be awesome. Are you ready? Why? Why would not he stay GM? Um, nine years behind the GM. I don't know. His family is still in Chicago. Travel a lot. Pretty sure as a GM or like a president of USA, uh, you do, uh, you know, eight years as a president of USA, you turn like 20 years and you live out of your body. <laughs> so, Jim and Montreal, nine years like Bergevin, it's like he's 30 years older than what he's supposed to be. Just kidding, but that's the, how difficult it is uh, in Montreal to become a GM, and with all the pressure you got over there, that's the reason why Joseph, he's maybe for me, time for him to not accept the contract of this. Um, because when you negotiate with someone, it's not public like this. You never say, oh, you have a contract on the table, you have to wait. Usually it's not that way. Usually they would go close door and talk each other, say, look, how, how many, blah, 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 blah. So that's more, you know, so that's my feeling. But if Mark Berger accept this, of course, you know what I mean? He could and he can. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure he will do it. I think he will wait a little bit longer. 
Question number one. In the NHL, which player has the most points in the last 10 seasons in NHL? So which player have the most points in the last 10 seasons? Is it Ovenskin, Giroud, Kane, Crosby, or Malkin? Are you ready? I'm waiting for your answer. Justin said A. See, Justin is not on Google. Right away, he got it. He said, me, I'm going with A. That's what I'm talking about. Ronnie Odette said C. Christian said A. Roger said Kane. Uh, bonne fin de soirée à vous tous. Merci, coach. Merci, uh, Karine. Bonne monkey said D. Dan Asham said A. Eric Olsinger. Eric, uh, il parle pas beaucoup, Eric, but uh, he show up tonight. In our tap, uh, said C. I take all the notes. Uh. Mingle, Ovenskin, uh, Regent said A. I said D. Thanks, I, to join us tonight for the first time. By the way, I, we give you a free point tonight. First participation of the quiz. We gave always a first point. So you get a point right now. Whatever you have right or not, if you are right, you will double. Ovenskin for main goal with A, but Butch said cross B, D. Akleda Weather said C, Patrick Kane. Uh, Michael Rosenblatt said C. And uh, Michael Robinson said C. Joseph Laham said C. Do I miss someone? I think I have everybody. If you are not, I apologize. Mr. Um, Gaydon is not there tonight. Usually Gaydon show up and he mentioned. The winner of this first question, guy, is uh, Slice at C in Otap. <laughs> the answer is C. Patrick Kane, 785 point, And we have Roger Score, Ronnie score, Eric score. Oh, we missed seven member tonight. Uh, in our tap score, high score, we give you a free point. Uh, Aklanda Weather score, Michael Rosenblatt score, Robert, uh, Michael Robinson score, and Joseph Laham score. So congratulations about that. Wake up, buddy, back in the house tonight. Uh, thanks to be a part of the show. Uh, and then... Um, I don't know. Do we miss someone else? I think Butter Monkey. What was your answer, Butter Monkey? Was D. Crosby. Here we go. Question number two. Are you ready? And the NHL, who has the most points in the last 10 seasons, but as a defenseman? Is it John Carlson, Eric Carlson, Victor Edman, Brent Burns, and Chris Letank? Same question, but this time it's for defensemen, the last 10 seasons. Who is going to get that point, everything like that? Uh, um, Atlanta said D, Brent Burns. Father Monkey said B. Roger said A. Um, Eric said D. Butch said B. Christian Fallon said B. Wake Up Buddy said D. Butch the Collector said D. B, I'm sorry. Hi, said C. Enotap said D. Justin Zubey said E. Michael Robinson said D. Joseph Laham said B. Joseph Laham said B. Uh, Dan Asham said D. Ronnie Odette said D. Aklada, no for Bada Monkey. Michael Rosenblatt said D. Brand Burns. Anybody else?
Regent said, hey, sorry, I have to, I have to computer. I have, I have two different chats, so I need to be sure I'm covering about that one there. I got you, Roger. Regent, I got you, buddy. The answer, that guy, surprise. The surprise of that one, the answer is B. Eric Carlson, 554 points. He has the most points. So Joseph Laam is the only one to take the lead at two. Battle Monkey score, Bush the Collector score, and Christian Final score. And that's joined by Michael Robinson, Michael Rosenblatt, and our tap, Akanada Weather, Hi, and Eric, and Ronnie, and of course, Roger. All of you have one point. We are right now on the schedule for everything looking good here. Let's jump in. Question number three. And the Olympics. All the Olympics. Which player has the most points? So for all the Olympics happening, like friend Ascorsi and everywhere, Olympics winter time, who has the most points? Is it Karlamov, Fitzsov, Kutov, Selene, or Forsberg? Who has the most points and career during the Olympics? Not one Olympic. Excuse me, all the Olympics. So here we go. Who's going to score? You did it, Christian. Eric said A, Alamov. Butch said A. Hi said A. Christian Funnel said E. Wake Up Buddy said B. Roger said, uh, I don't know. Dan Asham <laughs> said E. Roger said E and A. Tell me again, sir. Jo Joseph Laham said D. Michael Robinson said E. Lord Duncan, welcome aboard, said E. Roger said A. I got it. Ronnie Wooded said D. Michael Robinson said E. Michael Robinson said E. Regent said A. I miss Christian Dubé, I believe. For sure. And or tap, I believe. I got you, Regent. Oh. Anybody else? I'm missing a couple of people. Justin Zubay said D. Enotab said D. Akada is half point then. Yep, you got it, my friend. What Michael Rosenblatt you score, by the way? I did not get your letter, Michael Rosenblatt. What you what is your letter, Michael Rosenblatt? You said D at the beginning, yep. All right, the answer to that question, guy, is uh, D. Celani, 43 point. Who score? In our top score. Weather score, point one, point 0.5. Uh, Justin Dubé, first time, I believe, you score. Uh, Rez, uh, Michael Rosenblatt score. Joseph Lanham take the lead, three and three. And that's all the only one got a point at that point. And sir, if I miss someone, I apologize. Coach, Michael, I said a D. But the monkey, uh, did I give the point to you? No, I did not. You have two points now. But the monkey. I apologize for that one there. Here we go. Next question. You have to be careful when you press this on, on the bottom. Ronnie Odette, uh, Ronnie, <laughs> yes, she's a Ronnie, 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 Ronnie. Yes. And I think Adam and Dan score also. Dan Asham score one point. 
and Ronnie is at two points right now. I apologize for that one over there. See, we, we are here to helping people. We're not here to blame people. All right, next question, guys. For Team Canada Olympics, which player has the most points? For all the Olympics, players participate to the Olympics Canada. Wayne Gretzky, Eric Landros, Wally Mara, Harry Watson, and Joey Jojo Juno. Good luck for the people. Really important answer now. Everything after I said D, Ronnie, is a new question. Oh, Regent said A. Dan said A. A, A, A. A, 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 E. But among the bunch. Raju said A. Hi said E. Christian said B. Enotab said D. Michael Rosenblatt said D. But the monkey said D. Aklada said D. I mean Joseph. Joseph. Ronnie Wooded said D. Anybody see the answer to the, the Joseph? Joseph said E. Joe, you know. All right. One more time. OMG. OMG, the answer of this one, guys, I'm surprised a lot of people got that one. Uh, Ari Watson, 37 points at the Olympics. A lot of people got D. Surprised me. Anyhow, Ronnie, three. Enotap, three. Aklada, weather, 2.5. Rose, Michael Rosenblatt. I'm sorry, Michael, I call you Rosie here. Three. Joseph, drop at three. But the monkey is at three, and the rest of you are right now at one. I do not see anybody get a point. If I miss you, please uh, let me know. Um, if I miss one of you, answer. I apologize. Many of you said A, and many of you said E. So uh, that's what happened. Last question of the night. Uh, whoops. Here we go. For the final question from the NHL Draft 2013, which team has the most game play powder picked during that year? So every team, draft players, whatever they play anywhere after, that's called as the Draft 2013. Which team have the most player draft powder by them and now they play in NHL and they add on the drafted in 2013. Is it Edmonton, Winnipeg, Buffalo, Columbus, Ottawa? Edmonton, Winnipeg, Buffalo, Columbus, Ottawa. Here we go. What should see? I know Christian, right? Hi, said B. Welcome aboard, hi. We love you, buddy. I like your people participate first time, show up, if you turn that. Hopefully to come back. We have a show every night at 9 o'clock p.m., the morning at 11 o'clock, and we follow all the team in NHL. Eric said A. Justin said A. Michael said A. Joseph said D. Regent said A. Wake up, buddy, said C.
Enotab said D. Dan said A. Bada Monkey said D. Michael Rosenblatt said D. Christian, me too. Ah, ah, ah. Michael and I are waiting for Ronnie to answer. <laughs> Christian said, yeah, me too. Ronnie said E. Atlanta Weather said E. But that, I think that's a good, <laughs> if you want to play strategist, if I was me, I would say, wait, I have to wait for Ronnie and, and Otap to take a decision, and then I'm going to go with them. <laughs> that would be my, my strategist to go there. So Michael is on that, so the last three times, it was a D. Smart guy, smart guy. Roger Delaney, welcome back. Uh, we thought you were watching football, Roger. Thanks to sub by. Don't forget to click on the likes. The answer that one, guys, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because we have Ronnie at three, and Otap at three, Akrada Weather at 2.5, Ro Michael Rosenblatt at three, Joseph Laham at three, Butter Monkey at three, and Bush the Collector. He was at one. But guys, you guys, one of you could win tonight, but you did not because the answer is C, Buffalo, 1,395 game. The following by the Winnipeg Jets guy was the number two. And that one with that bouch, the collector score at two. The rest of you are at one, but we have tonight five winner of the game. Honestly, Atlanta could be six and all of you win tonight, so it's a tie game for many, many players tonight. But you guys, you could win if you select Buffalo, one of you guys. So congratulations for each, each one of you. Uh, yeah, so that's what we do here. Those questions are not always easy, and that's the beauty to understand. It's fun. Participate is the key behind that. We don't really care who wins. The fact is just to participate and to learn more about those questions make you to know about hockey. So thanks again to joining us. We don't go nowhere, but we just want to sharing to you. Congratulations for each one of you. Did it again. So again, Ronnie. <laughs> oh my God, Christian is funny. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. The yeah, only I know is on the top, I know he's bad. <laughs> Michael Robinson. Uh, Michael, we won both. One tonight, you step up. Six people win tonight. Congratulations. Thank you, Kelly. It was fun. No problem. Are you welcome to join us? Thanks to join us, by the way. And uh, RJI, I like your name. Christian, that was funny. <laughs> uh, uh, Ronnie starts, uh, Joseph start with three great answers, then he drop. Um, <laughs> Christian, I. Uh, that's funny. Uh, and then um, Enotap stopped three and four. And then um, that's what happening. Repeat about the monkey. Yeah, Joseph. 2012-13, um, right? If you go about that year, they have a lot of great selection they got in 2013. Um, do I, I, don't, I don't think so. I have them in front of me right now. Uh, but um, 12, 13, 12, 13, that's the year, I believe. It. Is it Cal Chinook that year for Montreal? I don't remember. Anybody have the, the update in football tonight? Anybody want to talk? I'm here. Like I said, we're not going nowhere. You're welcome to join, stay. We're welcome to go. Don't forget, guys, before you leave, to click on the like. That'd be awesome. We have 41 likes, so that's great to see this. Was making it a barca right? Yep, so right by the monkey. About that one over there. Yep. Is that that year, like, Barnett? Reynard. Wow, 14-13 Washington. 
They play again who? Roger. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, guys. If you come here to listen or to hear about the NH NFL, the only thing I do, I participate to the fantasy <laughs> football, but I don't follow. All right, Roger. See you tomorrow night. Yes. The Giants. You're absolutely right. I took Washington to win, I believe. Thanks very much again, Coach. See you all tomorrow. Of course, time for the dog walk, uh, Michael. 10 20. Tonight, we forgot to say hi to Kayla. We didn't see Zenith tonight, so that's the reason. We completely apologize to, Kaya, to Zayla. It was great to see uh, Karin and Kimberly around. Adam, coach, um, here we go. We know about that today. Uh, Bottom Monkey is another one. Participate. Michael Rosenblatt, I'm not sure about him. Uh, but um, happy holidays, uh, young keeper, Adam. Have a good night, Bottom. Oh, you said, okay, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Robinson. Possible tomorrow, guys. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, yeah, I have a lot of news for you. I forgot. First of all, we have a show tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, but I'm not there. Coach is out tomorrow morning. I have to go scouting, triple A program tomorrow morning. So I'm out tomorrow from 11 to 2. I'm back after that. Uh, I will try to do a live stream with Michael to watching the game Detroit Red Wings prospect tomorrow. I don't know the game is at 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock. But we're going to go there. Uh, but we're not going to show the game on my side, but we're going to talk about the game. Then secondly, of course, we are back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So all weekend, we are back at 9 o'clock. We're going to reevaluate the, the training camp of the Montreal Canadiens. Everything like that, we're going to follow the Panthers. Live stream maybe the Panthers during the weekend also. So we're going to get a little bit more, starting to do a little bit more play by play during the weekend. Uh, I don't know what time they play by the monkey because I have to scout this weekend, so I have difficult time. What do you think about joining staying for one year to help break in the new gym? Yeah, that's my coin about that. I will see like Johnny as a Benjamin become um, a consultant or something like that. Yeah, he did. But you should not do it the way he did it, but he did. <laughs> so I don't think so he will do it again that, that way. We need uh, Johnny Golden Mother and Led Joke. Uh, yes, sir. Michael was showing the rookie cam, Adam. Yeah, I know. But you should not do it, but you did it. That's not good. Because the copyright. Uh, by the monkey, all the game at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, so Saturday, Sunday, by the monkey. Okay, so Monday I can get it. Tuesday I can get it. Coach, you have close friend and any show you see regularly beside Benjamin. Um, you know, La Tendresse, La Pierre. Um, I have a couple of people all involved around the team as a reporter, but not much, honestly. Okay, so maybe Saturday morning I will look, watch this. If it's, I don't know if it's going to be live or not. Some stretch on the story I'm horrible at. I did not watch or think about hockey from like, I didn't ever watch TV in the stretch of time. Oh, wow, Joseph.
That's like seven, eight years. You did pretty good. You get three and three tonight. At uh, three and five. And last night you get uh, I think yes yesterday it was zero and five, I believe. The night before you got some point, I believe. And one night you did well. Three uh the night Roger uh, Roger win five and five, you have three. Good answer. And know that my wife said, can my mother come down for the weekend? So I said, why? And she said, well, she's been up on the roof two weeks already. <laughs> I'm doing my first event string tomorrow. I feel congratulations. I can that. Mike Denis, do you see him sometime? I don't see him sometime, Mike Denis. Um, I have some connection with uh, someone else. <laughs> yes, Speaking of which culture, could you give us a bit of your own history and the coaching profession? I would like to know more about your experience. Sorry for anyone who's already heard this. Uh, not a problem, Christian. Um, triple A program um, with uh, Repentigny in Montreal, 1989 to 1994, 93. Uh, become scout uh, for the Laval uh, during that time, the Stan Laval. Um, with the uh, Maurice brother, Bob uh, Arkley, Pierre Kramer, Michael uh, Michel Terrien, um, all those three coach. I was there. I was video coach over there also. Then from that, I left one year. I went with the Saint Saint uh, one year in QM. With Saint Saint, I was coaching video right there. Martin brother was a, the goalie coach. I uh, was goalie coach. My third brother was playing Saint Saint. Then after that, I went one year with the Predator, Grand Bay Predator, and we won the Memorial Cup. At that moment, I left and I went to the East Coast Hockey League. After that, uh, then I worked in the East Coast Hockey League for 15, 16 years, with a couple of years in the American Hockey League as a scout. If you know that. And then after that, I came back and I coached a uh, junior in USA for five, six years. And then I decided to stop when I came back in Florida three years ago. And I coached just like a triple A, double A here, U18, uh, if you turn that. And then I decided to stop to coach. And then I decided to do this, what I'm doing right now here, where I have no expectation of this. But during COVID, because of the situation, I decided to create that channel the Hockey Nation live show. So hopefully that resumes a little bit. What are you looking for? Coach, do you think is the better fit on the first line, Dwayne or Tufoli? Tufoli. Uh, the reason why Dwayne is because he's not great on defensive side. Uh, usually the first line play usually, again, one versus one. So my point to you, uh, Dwayne is going to give you a lack of... Uh, the competition or compete again the best line and defensive side is going to have a, have a difficult time. Uh, who do you guys will in the Washington football team join the winner will be announcing my stream. Coach, who has the top five? Um, five. Uh, you, are you talking about the Canucks, by the monkey? Okay, if you see him, tell him he's very boring like an analyst on Bondral bench. Uh, thanks. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, but I'm not thanks to see him. But I can tell him someone work with him Maybe you can tell him, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Coach, I emailed you, but I sent coachfrenchy.com, which is friend from what I you post earlier today. Uh, it's coach at coachfrenchy.com. I did not get that email. What did you email me? I did not get your email from you yet. So the one he's here, coach at coachfrenchy.com <clears throat> is a good one. And Nolander, yes, you have a great interview from him after the day today. He speaks French, said, Oh, comment ça va? Mon nom est Mathias. So they laugh about this a little bit. I cannot wait to see this kid in the exhibition game, uh, Johnny. Yep. 
Yes, the Canucks are glad you start streaming. Coach, thank you so much, Joseph. Coach, thank you for the email. You're welcome, buddy. I appreciate that. If you're also a member of the, the channel, as the member, it's what, $2.99, $4.99, or whatever it is. Uh, you get email almost every day, and we give you some contents you don't produce during the show. Uh, Sometimes there are articles I pick or whatever I am, and I send to you guys. Today we talk about the three teams, the prospect. Everything like that. So that's what happened as a member. So the people are in green get an email at least every two days. Uh, so the Canucks all the time. Uh, oh my God. Uh, you know, you have a lot of great players to play with there. Yeah, but, but again, you know, the, the Southern brother, you have to go with that part of there. Marcus Naslun, another one of there. Bure, for the time he'd been there, it was amazing over there. They love Trevor Landon over there. One of the best play over there, uh, for sure. Robert Deliango is another one. Uh, I really admire Stan Smell over there uh, and my book over there. And I can go a little bit deeper, but quickly like this, that's the name, I believe, uh, all great for the Canucks. And I'm sure I forgot some of them, but in my head, that's what I'm thinking. Do you think Stanko so Ronnie, did you have a chance to meet Don Sherry? No. Uh, not really Don Sherry. Hopefully, Christian, I answer your question. Uh, by the way, is it maybe too fast, whatever it is? But uh, yeah. And then Christian, uh, Justin, uh, Coach, do you think is a better fit for the first line? Yeah, I answered that one over there also. Um, Ken Nelson. You talk about players running. Top five players, Panthers. It's really strange because that Panthers, their story is not young, right? It's not long. It's like, you know, Vancouver is what, 1970, and the Panthers start in 93. Um, that's all about, buddy. That's helping. Uh, Ken Nelson, you talk about the player play for the Calgary Flames. Uh, Nelson. I believe. Uh, top five for the Panthers, like I mentioned, yeah, their, their, their franchise history is short, right? Um, thanks, Cole. Very cool. Also, do you have an opinion on the... Uh, yeah, um, I have a... Um, first of all, when this happening, I have no problem. Like, I don't have no problem. I have a problem with uh, Mac Bergevin, not the, the day they select him. I have a problem with Mike Bergevin after the Trevor Timmons speak. I thought me, they talked to him because he refused to get select. He didn't want anybody to select him, wait for the upcoming year, the next year. And the Montreal select him. I thought in my head, all right, they select him, I'm okay with I hope they talk to him during the weeks, like three days prior or after he made that statement, Montreal knocked the door, said, hey, Logan, we want you. We want you. Talk to the parents. Talk to the kids. Explain what they want you, everything like that. For what I heard, they never did this. What Timon said, we interviewed him a month ago, and we never contacted him after that. That was disappointed for Montreal Canadian. That's what I was upset. Now, turn around now, go back tonight. For the selection, it's a good selection. The kid is great, good hockey player, everything like that. For the mistake he did, he would never, never change enough to repair that mistake. But he can repair himself to forget that. But that mistake will always be stuck with him. Whatever he does, whatever he go, whatever he perform, bad, Blue, boo, everything like that. But he can have a great look, like he have a great heart, a great, um, a great head. I believe it's going to, to change. I think the OHL make a statement to prove to the people a statement to say, oh, we can do this, everything like that. I think it was hard on him, but you know what? That's okay. That will give him a six month to work on himself, to get a professional to make him better and be ready. He can train, he can do private lesson, he can training every day, he can go to school, online, he can take care about himself and when the season start, and, uh, and uh, generally, it will be back. The second thing, he's a, with a great organization. 
he's with the London Knight where the fra- the 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 under brother play in NHL. They know they can helping him a lot. I'm great about that news about that. Now we have to give him about four five years, four years before he will be with Montreal Canadiens. He have a skill, talent. Now it's all about development. I think that mistake he, cr- he make, the time we fix it, he will prove it by him, his behavior, everything like that. But he's going to be always uh, scrutiny by the people watching him, whatever he make a mistake, everything like that. But I think I have a great family. The kid make a mistake. It is what it is. Cannot come back. If we learn from you, feeler. You learn from what you make wrong. Now it's time for him to face the adversity, face what you need to do, uh, fix what you have to do, and focus on his hockey career. And that's what you need to learn for the next couple of months. So that's my subject about him, about that. Uh, the five players I want to come back about Mr. Bader Monkey. Uh, Seven West, Ali Alikin. Uh, they are my two one over there. Um, low and go. Uh, you have to put at some point Barkov, Uberdo. One this will be over. Uh, can Eggblad become that one over there? Possible also. But on the old time, I will say the, the name I mentioned to you. No. Pavel Bury play what? Only a few years here. I understand what he accomplished, but I'm talking about people been here more longer. Uh, people are with love Paul Laris, but talk about talent. I think Hokinen, ways. And then the, the player I'm talking about, that's the one I'm, I believe. Do you meet any Lightning players when they play on the scouting game? Um, on my head, not really. On my head, uh, Bouri, Boulet, uh, but not many, I'll be honest with you. Coach, uh, this is the best hockey show I've ever, ever watched. Uh, what are the TUD of the gym and the NHL? Uh, first of all, Steve, thank you so much. Very kind for you, for your kind of words. Uh, very kind of you to say that. Uh, the duty as a GM now is changing, guys. Uh, they surround themselves with three people usually, at least two people. Now they have an instant GM. They take care about the salary cap. So they have to be sure the money is on the point every single day. So it's duty changing now. The really G- for the GM, it's all about trade. Development players, so you have a lot of people take care about report to him every day. And I'll be honest with you, they become a CEO, a company as a German manager now. Uh, that's why he works. It's all about the personnel, talk with your coach every single day, talk with your scouting all the time. You you know, like like Benjamin, we talk with Trevor Timmons almost every two days, I'm sure. Talk with his coach every single day. And then he talk, he talk with Aston General Manager almost every day. Uh, about the money, everything like that. So really, it's not about the team, the people he surround himself. The job is to be sure the team is what they can make the team better. He consult all the, the players all on the trade bait, and that's really what he does, plus his responsibility of the show up and when he has the, t- the time to talking about uh, something happening to the team, a trade or uh, whatever happening. So that's really the duty of the GM manager, you have to supervise everything inside the organization on the hockey operation daily, every day. And that includes the players, the coach, the salary cap, the trade, the scouting, and everything like that. And then after that, one is uh, every period of the time is different, right? During the off season, but now it's the UFA, the RFA, the salary, the, 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 the contract, and then re engage your people. And you have other people that take care about the, the Laval rocket. If you know that, he supervises, he watch, but he's not over them all the time. It's really about the Montreal Canadian. Hopefully, this is helping you. Coach, that be sure the Fleury and Chicago in front was hard to look. It's funny, you're not the first one. On social media, a lot of people, was, it was weird to see him uh, with that color, to be honest with you. And also, the, the, the use as color for the pad, if you know that, is, you know, it's different from what I thought. So, uh, really, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a jersey. I know he's going to perform. I know he's going to give the best he can be. Yeah, I remember that he was in a ironic that he was picked again, his will. And yeah, uh, absolutely right, Christian, about this. Uh, but, you know, and I always said the, the scouting, it's a lot of time, it's gambling. 
And I think for the book of the Montreal defense, they would said, if we don't select him, he's going to be, he'd be out at the second round. So uh, someone would take him at the end of the day. But I select him, you know, you get all the drama and the, the bad comments, everything like that come with that. But now you don't hear anything after that anymore. So sometimes the timing fix everything. Breaking news, Don Brady is to play. Can he lead the Abs to seven cup? Uh, don't talk about my sister, Don Brady, like that. That's here, Brad. Uh, do you think the Panthers should look at Vesliv Kafrikov? Uh, not really at that moment. Uh, the Panthers have to wait to start the season with what they have and go from there after that. Harvey Pinal has been getting a lot of attention for his high energy compete level. They have a lot of good words about him. Rob Ramesh talked about him, like I mentioned last night. He's going to be on that one. He runs the show right now at the rookie camp as a captain. If you like that, I believe he could become another Gallagher at some point around the team. Uh, that's what the words they hear from people. I think it would be great for him to have one more year with the Laval Rockets, and then after that, it would be interesting. But it's another mold, the player where the Tampa Bay does, they do a lot. Like Bourret Goulet, every time Boulet, Bourret Boulet. So, or Joseph. So expect that for RV Pinal. I would not be surprised. Three seasons, two Rockets, Richard. Uh, yes, I have a question, Coach. Yes, sir. Hit the likes. Thank you so much. You know, that, uh, Coach, do you remember where the Oakland Seal went? Um, you talk about the transfer of the team, like California Golden Seals to California 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 sea, Seals. Is it that that question, Coach? Do you think Ovechkin will tie or pass all-time scorer? I believe he will do it. He's still thirty-three game goal per season for five years, Justin. Uh, I can feel it. He can do it now. Everything you know, we never know the injuries, everything like that. But I feel because more close is getting, more much weight is going to get, and you know, you look like health. He could look like he can play. So for me, I would say at that moment, I feel he will pass him. You have all the chance to get it. Um, do you think Barry Boulet make the roster? Oh, yeah, Bunny Monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When will the Avs win the cup? I have no clue. I think the best question you can ask when a Canadian team can win the cup, that would be the best question you can ask. I, I don't know. It's so hard. The parity in each other is so hard. You never know. You're going to have an underdog so, show up at some point. Uh, honestly, I don't know, to be honest with you. I cannot believe that many people are sleeping on the Panthers this year. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Barkov, it, it's a bit normal in our tap. You know what happening today, by the way, Johnny Golden and the uh, Montreal Canadian fans? Today, Aaron Ward for the TSN uh, they asked him about who's going to have most points. He said Tampa Bay and Florida Panthers. He said, who's going, who has a better team, Toronto and Montreal? And Aaron Ward, uh, TSN and Toronto said Montreal. So it was the biggest on social media today after 3 p.m. today. Everybody was talking about this, so it was funny to see that. Joseph, the Buffalo prospect with the New Jersey prospect tomorrow night, Power versus O's. Uh, to the play by play, uh, super excited about this game tomorrow. Um, 
I don't think so. Owen Power is over there, Joseph. Um, I would say to you the Jet and the Cats. Yes, you know that, right? Um, I don't see the wall over there. It's not looking good uh, about the wall for, in my book. Um, and then uh, another big news today was an interview between um, Linda Call of the ESPN and also uh, Evander Kane uh, talking about his problem where he feel like uh, a lot of things is not true, everything like that. So it was a great, great interview if you're watching this. Um, how's Kane talk about? But um, that's why another great discussion today and NHL around everything like that. You have a lot of things, you know what I mean? I can create like 20 videos per day right now. I just have no time to do it. But um, a lot of things going on. I need to work on fantasy hockey. I did not do anything about video about that. And, uh, and then this weekend, I have about 12 hours of scouting uh, player this weekend. So it will be another busy weekend again. And the season that start yet. And we have to create, I have to create the show at 5 o'clock p.m. For people all new here, uh, starting October 1st, we have a, a daily show at 5 o'clock p.m. every night, Monday to Friday. And during the weekend, we'll see what happened, but that's what happened. Evan Kane did not bet on my game. I bet on my game in Vegas, but I'm okay. Did you listen to the Nolander press con after that? Yes, I did. Honey, the question we should ask which team has the most chance to bring back the cup to Canada. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see that. It's so hard. It would be interesting to see Vancouver Winnipeg this year. That's two teams I'm looking for. Yeah, the, the Lon and Dory was good because he was talking about the fact like yeah, Montreal, of course, Christian. Here we go. You got it. It was closed last year, for sure. Um, I'm interested to what to see Winnipeg this season at Vancouver. And I said to win the Stanley Cup. I'm talking about how they're going to perform. It's a two team make a lot of change where they have missing a lot of things last year. So Winnipeg Jack struggled as a defenseman and they get some defensemen. Um, Vancouver have 15 change, so we'd be interesting about that. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I expect the Florida Panthers doing to do this. I was trying to maybe a video to have a prediction. So Barkov signed for eight years at ten million dollars, but I'm not sure how we'll do it. Peter Scada, welcome aboard. <laughs> yes, Peter. First of all, thanks to join us. Hopefully, your subscriber at the show. If not, we'll welcome if you can do it. If not, you can click on the likes. If you welcome back, uh, welcome back. You are a returner. Uh, you're absolutely right. The 2011 with Boston Bruins again the Vancouver Canucks um, and seven game, if I can recall it. And I thought at some point Vancouver is going to win it. But again, uh, Thomas was unbelievable. Uh, Vancouver have everything to win. The team was unbelievable, guys, and Vancouver. And I didn't even know it was a coach over there. And uh, so close. Yep. Uh, no problem, Joseph. It's like everybody have a, an agreement, have a scholarship, or they are commit to play in the NCAA the, the, the upcoming season. Cannot be at the rookie camp. So like Jordan Iris uh, for the Montreal uh, Starball for Montreal, Alex Tuck for Montreal. Um, I'm missing a, a Sean Farrell, where I still believe that's a bad decision for him. But I can understand school is very important for him. But I see because Harvard guys play in the divisions called IVY, IVY, and that division in college is not strong. 
he's not going to play against the best of the best. So I'm a little bit concerned about Sean Farrell, um, his regression in hockey. He's going to be maybe the best at the team. So you're not going to have no competition inside the practice, everything like that. So my concern is a little bit about him, about that. Um, but, you know, the family take the right decision to go to school. Everybody's different, right? But you're not going to see, uh, like, Bernier and everything like that, Joseph. Everybody go, like, Thomas, Brisson, everything. Coach, why did the Ads Farm they move out of Hamilton a few years ago? Well, they, I think they move from Hamilton to Laval, right? Or they go to Hamilton. I think they went to New Fall Glen, to Hamilton, Hamilton to Laval. Am I right? So New Jersey is going to run Buffalo tomorrow like Detroit did tonight. <laughs> Possible, Joseph. Uh, the, the, the player from Devils have a great, a lot of prospect over there. So it would be interesting to see that. Do you know uh, why the Canadian team have trouble winning the Cup? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, hopefully knock the world, Joseph. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's start with Enotap. It was easy. Every team... Montreal Canadian and NHL, many, many teams decide to bring their affiliation home close to where they are. For first, they're traveling to, re to call up a player. Second, to follow up with the team. Like Mike Bergevin, Friday night, he can go to watch the game at Laval Rockets. It's seven miles from home, example, right? So for the access accessibility and access and, um, the way to see the players and to be the call up players and to be around, it's easier to have a team about 20 miles, something like that. So you can see Vancouver just got a new team and I Ab bought Ab Ab Ford, uh, Ford. Then you got, you know, all the guys like San Jose and Ontario, everybody like that. And not Ontario, Ontario, but Ontario and California. They get that's the reason why they approach all their team, American Hockey League, close their cities to watching them, to call up the players, and to follow up more their players over there. On the flip side for the Stanley Cup Canada, guys, it's 17 versus 25. That's the first problem. The second problem, the tax in Canada is higher to many other states in USA. That's the second problem. The third problem, the weather is harder in Canada versus everywhere so all those negativity around them it's harder to make a better team together and that's why the reason you have to compete seven versus 25 every year so to have that kind of longevity to win the Stanley cup in canada will be really really hard Do you know why Canadians? okay hopefully knock the door yes uh, what they would be the panthers we got this year um, I predict at the 99 point for them, or, one or, or 103. Hobby is two points away for 500. Yes, by the monkey. Coach, the problem is Batman does not want to see a Montreal team when the camp. It's not this. This is all about, you know, those, those is all like blah, 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 blah. Batman, he don't really care who wins the Stanley Cup. What is care, Batman, is to be sure every owner make money at the end of the year. Want to be sure the hockey is more popular. That's what the mission of Gary Batman. We can blame him, we can do this. That's what he does. That's why he's still there because every owner make money and they love him. So all the, you know what I mean? It's like all the blah, blah, blah. He, he, come on. You know what I mean? He, why he would not like the Montreal win the Stanley Cup? Why, why, why the purpose from him as, com, as a commissioner, he would say, I don't want Canada to win the Stanley Cup. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't believe this. Is the decision of where to place them up to the gym? Um, not really. Is the owners at some point, right? They, they make a plan with the owner because they own by the team. The Montreal Canadiens own the Laval Rocket. So what's happening also, Laval Rocket built a new building uh, for open up 
and to have fun activity inside the, the building and that with a conjecture of the owners, Molson, Laval, City of Laval, everybody joined together, package deal. And that's what happened about that one there. Does it make sense? You just did, just did the same thing, moving from time park. Yeah, it's good. Exactly, Joseph. Coach, uh, how do you go about becoming a hockey? How do you do about becoming a hockey scout? Um, on my case, it's a generation to generation. <laughs> well, not anymore, but before that, my grandfather, my dad was scout. And um, so for me, is I become him, and then I coach, and then I follow players, prospect, and we turn that so... They teach me about how to watching the players, the his abilities at skating, singling, a puck, puck singling, uh, angling, and then shooting. And then after that, you make those players. You talk about character, question, everything like that. And that's what it takes. Yeah. You know, now, you have different location. Now you can have, you can add, uh, you can have a, a, a course. You can become a certification scout, whatever it is, but it's not easy. The key to become scout at a young age is to follow a junior team, a AAA program, and then tell them, hey, I want to be free, an intern, and I want to give you my scout report after every game. So something like that. Or you can tell them, hey, junior, I want to become an intern as a scout. Can I work for you guys free? And I'm going to follow all the U14 Bantam AAA in the province, the Quebec example. And now it's easier because now you have access to the game online. I can be on right now watching what's going on this weekend. I blame in Minnesota uh, for the weekend where they have about, I don't know, 1,500 players between 13 years old to 18 years old play this weekend. You have TV, uh, all the camera all around. We can watch hockey everywhere now. So it's easier as a scout, but to start an anything, internship and knock the door. Hey, I want to become a scout. Can I work for you free guys? Give me any job. I want to learn. I want to get better. I want to be this. That's how it works. It's like anything else. Uh, and not uh, Butter Monkey, he would get those points as uh, abs. Uh, I don't like that New Joseph ripped the Frenchers out of Bay Uh Yeah, sometimes it's really. I think I could be wrong. I oh, know Belleville is a senator. Yeah. Before that, the New Jersey was now with Albany, the River Rats. I believe there was an Albany after, before they become Binghamton. But I agree with you, Dennis. But again, like I said, they try to get close, a closer. And now that same words as Zuzki Caulfield as the Panthers, Batman only care about the making money for the game. It's making money for the owners. Batman, I've been around so long, are going to hate me. Yes, good night, uh, Atlanta. He won't say it is what I feel of Batman. He won't say it. It's like, yeah, you can feel about that, right? But at the end of the day, the way they manage the league is with rig, rig, ratings, TV. And more the contract is bigger on money for the TV, but that's, that's what's happening for them. So, but I don't see he would not like it. Ronnie Odette, how about the officiating of another game against Vegas this past season? For me, that's what it adds, Rocky Balboa moment. We not have the one the final, but we beat the Golden Refs. Uh, yeah, but at the end of the day, everybody make mistake. Unfortunately, part of the game, but overall, They do a good job. I understand the frustration as the fan. Overall, we have great referee in NHL. I understand he missed call, but you're always going to miss call. But 
it's balancing during the year. Some moment is more hot, sometimes it's more cold, but overall, I'm happy about that one. I'm, I was upset when there was a high stake on Perry against Perry, everything like that, right? But I think overall, they make a good job. Have a good night, Bottom Monkey. I'm sorry about that. I never ask this player like you do, coach. I don't even want to put that much thought into it. <laughs> I come here for you to tell me what's going on. <laughs> Not a problem, Joseph. I really, I was also coach a scout and was seven years old at French. She's called Lufto. <laughs> uh, yes, Albany, yes. Uh, I, at that time, I was scouting, and um, Albany was playing at the round deck um, in, the, in the north of, um, you know, Plattsburgh, every time that. So I was doing the line. I was going to um, at the round deck, Albany. Then I would go to um, Rochester, American, Rochester. I would do that line over there and come back up and then come back down. <laughs> Coach, do you know if there are any new rules change for this year? And do you travel and USA? Yes. That's a lot. The only new rules in our tap now is the skate over the blue line. Um, this, that rule was not involved last season. I could be wrong in our tap. You have two rules. One was the, the, the skate over the blue line. I'm now... I have so many things I'm thinking, like, did they start to involve this last season or they was going to apply this year? Fair enough. He still got my blood out. I understand, Christian. I, as a fan, I can feel it too. And like, I'd be upset sometimes. But for me, when I review and talking, if you know that, I think overall they're pretty good. One of my best friends is a ref in NHL, so I have to be careful with what I said. Just kidding. Where does Patrick well live now? Is a Quebec City? Yeah, but I was here in Florida. How the ref assess an icing call? I would never understand that rules. So. Yeah, they use that one right there, the skate over the blue line. I was not sure about this. Uh, not really. Uh, they will double down now the cross checking. That was the one rule they was talking about this. Now I don't know if they was approved or not. But the cross checking was one rules. I know they was really talking to change it. So it'll be interesting about that. Yes, the ref and hockey are better at the baseball, the best in football and soccer. Uh, Joseph, the, the ref assess icing call. I never understand that rule, but the puck have to be sent before the blue, the red line. So when the puck is sent from on the defensive side on the your neutral zone from the blue from the red line to your Goal, all right. That's the that's where you engage the motion of the high sing. So one you send, and then after that to call the high sing, the puck have to go through the goal line at the end of the zone, and nobody during the time it was sent by the the team, the opening team could not catch the goal the 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 puck. Now, this was the old rules in the past. Well, when you talk about this, code, because I want to explain to you what the icing was for years, years, and years. Red line, goal line, puck go through the goal line, nobody can touch it. Whistle, boom, over. Now, they change it as a hybrid icing. So when you talk about coats. Now, at the, at the, at the ash mark, at the circle, the two circles you see on the ice, you have ash mark, one for the player to be on one side to another side. When the puck go through this, the referee is going to call it quickly now. So that, that's how it works now. Also, with the icing, the team create the icing, cannot change the players. So all the five players have to sit on the ice now. They cannot go changing. Secondly, now, in NHL, the team has an icing for, right, not against, but icing for. They can select which circle they want to get uh, off the, the face off. So if Montreal um, 
have a nice thing against them, right? So the opponent team can select, I want the right side of price or the left side of price. So the team um, have that selection. I think the puck cannot pass two line today. I think Ilona will take a step forward this year. Especially after his summer training regime, he's a great skater. Yes, exactly, Johnny. They talk about him, Ron Remage, talk about him yesterday, if you turn that. It's funny, I have another story today where um, I don't know who bring this. Is it you, Johnny, talk about the interview uh, about um, someone? They cannot bother him because it's food and we turn that. The rule makes it sound like it's up to the ref discretion that makes it debatable. Uh, of course, uh, the 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 front ref is the one decide. So the back ref or linesman, honestly, call the icing first, engage the icing. The front ref linesman decide if it's going to be uh, icing or not. And the puck have to go through now the ash mark. And nobody can play the puck if you turn like that. And if I'm beside my goaltender and I sing the puck, and before someone on my team touch the puck, before the red line, is still a icing at the end of the day. Because I touch the puck before the red line. If I touch the puck after the red line, now it's tips and then no, it's a wave icing. It could be the same thing if an open and team uh, touch the puck at any time on the icing, you wave the icing and the play continues. But this year, the U travel team, USC guys, unbelievable. Stupid rules, stupid rules, stupid rules, stupid rules. Sorry about that. That's unbelievable. How they release the player eight away the air measure on one they wear measure on day one. Yes, every team have that kind of the sort of, sorry coach, I don't know if you called it earlier or not, but remind me who is your pick for the next Montreal Canadian? Uh, I will select Matt Matthew Darsh. And when I said him, I want to be sure he's surrounded with people and I would love to have Mike Bergevin stay over there as the president of the team or a special consultant. I think Matthew Marsh, Marsh, and the reason why is a young, and now the new generation, a GM, it's not about analytics, data, everything like that. I believe Matthew Dash could be a very good GM one day in NHL. For me, I think I would be great if they get him. We did not see you earlier. Did I miss you, buddy? Have a good night, Regine. Brian, is it your first time you come in? I did not see any of your comments prior to that. If you did, I really apologize. I did not see it. If it's the first time, have a great night, you and Minnie. And we appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Joseph, I knew it. He was more involved for the ref. Can I see on my TV? <laughs> Thanks, Cole. You're welcome. Hey, everyone. Hope you're having a great time with the swimming coach, Francis. Awesome, brother. Just wish you a great night, guys. Love you, family. Thank you so much, Brian. I just see it right now. So thanks again, buddy. We love you too. You and Minnie, always a pleasure to have you around. Can you just imagine Mario Lemieux playing at his time without the red line? It would be terrible for other team. Yeah, I can see that too. It would be great. I think Jean Bilivou is another one. Uh, good night, Brian. Do you think it would be a normal season or a restriction season? Um, who knows about COVID, right? So for me right now, everybody's looking for the Olympics, looking for the full year 82 season, if you that. You know, that's 45 likes. 46, that's awesome. You know, that we're getting at the 40 now, back to back to back, a couple of times. Uh, Johnny Golden, where can we see them play? Wait and wait. Uh, wow. I don't know they release it. Awesome, Brian. I, I want to be sure I did not miss you, buddy. If because I will apologize. I want to be sure I follow up. The best I can. Uh, Johnny, I'm not sure if they did it or not. Um, they will at the beginning of the year, or they will maybe show up at the training camp, but uh, 
rookie camp, I'm not sure. I see, like the younger GM as its friend generation, the hockey, so it makes more sense. The select one based on that. Yeah, Christian, you can talk about a little bit like Carl Dubas, right? Uh, Tom Fringero is a little bit older, but, you know, they try to get a younger GM now, and like, you know, as older on my book. Uh, I think, you know, the Bill Zito is a young, young 40s. I know Mark Matthews is a little bit young. Maybe Matthews may be not ready yet. But I think at some point, Matthew Dash could be a great GM for the Montreal Canadian, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so it would be interesting. I will have confidence at Patrick Arrua, to be honest with you. But again, you're going to have a divide. Fans will be happy. Some will be not unhappy. Just look what he did to the rebook. Can the mute pass him? Yeah. 46 like on the offseason first year. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Joseph. You know, I didn't really like his one side, but again, it's a... I can see more people, Christian Dubé. Um, you know, right now we have a Christian final. We have Justin Dubé earlier. I can see Hai was earlier. Gaydon is earlier. Uh, we have a new name show up, and that's, I know we grow. It's just like I wish my video pay more attention. Right now, I'm not good. It's upset me, but it's okay. On the flip side, my live stream pick it up a lot because tonight at the end of the night i'm going to see maybe 140 160 maybe 200 but in the next three four three days i'm going to be about over 1000 people see my by, by the video so my video a live stream you get it it's my own video like flashback the preview uh if i talk about anything else Usually my 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 viewer are not great on videos, but it is what it is. Great night, Brian. The leave had the right idea to having Zubay with Lamariello and Antar, but they destroyed that. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's because I know the story. So, Bill Shanahan bring Mike back up. And then he bring Lou Lamariello. Mark Under was already in. During that time, they signed Carl Dubas who was on the OHL. And he got a job with the Toronto Marlins. At that time, Marlins signed Sheldon Keefe as a coach. Then they promote Carl Dubas as an analytic data coach as 10 GM with Lamar Hielo. And also they have uh, Hunter. And they got also Jacques Lemaire as a consultant with Bill Shannon. My backup, he was a coach over there. My best friend, he was a goalie coach. So I knew all the story over there. But Lamariello, he was taking a lot of space in the building. More and more and more. And Shannon have a great relation with Lamariello when he played with the Devils. So my point to you at some point is Lamariello left. When he left, that opened the door between Mark Hunter or Carl Dubas. And Shannon would decide to go with Carl Dubas. Mark Andor left after that. And then Carl Dubas was not agree with Mike Backock. And then that's the reason why they bring out Backock and they bring Keith. That's a normal process as a general manager between that. But that's the story behind that. When you the month one Toronto, I can tell you that. One Toronto have a, a, the year they can select Austin Matthews. They trade everybody to get more chance to finish first to get the best player between him or Jack Eichel. And that's this is true. They trade many players at the trade deadline to give more chance to Toronto lose more game for the last 20 game and they have more chance to win the, the lottery. And they win it, and they got Austin Matthews. 
The year prior to that, they select Mitch Marner. So that's what give you another end of the hockey and the world of the Toronto Women Belief. Uh, do you know, Coach, uh, who was the oldest player to win the Calder Cup? If you get it, you're good. It is easy. I believe it's Peter Stashny. But I could be wrong. Yeah, giving all fury, I've seen our fan get about the goalies, maybe making great jam with Coach Dissension. He could be that kind of divide about that one. The Varek video is not over 10,200. Yeah, they create a lot of uh, a drama over there for that one, for sure. You know, that every YouTuber has that complaint about the stand alone video. It will still work for sub. It will see. The right hype uh, question, yeah. You have a one view over 10,000. They were right, Johnny. I never understood why they did not have Dale Under as a co coach. Uh, because Dale Under, there's no one coach in any NHL. Dale Under is happy with the London Knight. He left right away after the Washington Capitals about that. Mr. Fallon O'Connor, welcome aboard. Don't forget to click on the likes. Thank you so much, Dan. Really kind of you to say that. Uh, Odette, I agree. Del on third. Joseph, uh, great coach. Uh, uh, Dan Asher, you rock every night. Coach, uh, thank you so much for everybody. Uh, at the end of the day, we rock all together. The success of this channel is because all together we make this happen and we make people stay longer because we have great conversation all together. Without you, this is impossible. I understand my job. I understand what I can do. But without you, that's not work. And, you know, Michael bring a lot of insight the morning. And we are grateful and thankful having Michael over there. And uh, we'll see what the direction of that one over there um, on this. Um, we are 1878, I believe, subscriber. I really believe we're going to hit the 900 uh, the next three days. And then it's hit the 2000, October 12th. Can we get a 2000 subscriber? Would be interesting. Uh, one more to 50 likes. Wow, 50 likes. But you know, when the game starts, you're going to get more people. That would be the, you know. But again, I, I, you guys, you've been with me all summer. I, we don't talk like that a lot during the game. You know, I'm watching the game like this, and I follow the game this way. Then I come back here, but I, we talk a lot during the, the during the intermission. And we, I don't know if you, some of you follow, but we have a, a scoreboard over my head, and we put a score, we put a, we put the game, the minutes of the game, everything like that. We follow, and of course, sometimes I forgot, but uh, it's fun. Uh, play by play, a coach is excited. Sometimes he's upset, but it's all about. Thank you so much for the number 50 likes. I appreciate a lot. This year for more will be the police. And again, for some of you, your membership, we said thank you so much to be a membership. Um, you know, don't forget to tell me what you like to hear or you like to learn. I try right now to work on the prospects so you get all the prospects uh, at that moment. But, you know, you're going to hear more articles about different things, so like that. It's just the time is limited, but uh, it's good. It's fun. And then, you know, uh, the short don't take a lot of view, but the short are great. It's a great. I love the short. Uh, people should watch the short every night because the short tell you the news of the day at seven o'clock. The short is going to become a, a morning video every morning now. You're going to have a short video about the, the score of the night before. Coach, you're getting popular. I told you, you have one of the likes one day, <laughs> Ronnie. Uh, no, but uh, it's to have, have a great time together. 
Uh, also, share the channel on your social media. Help Coach Frenchy grow. Thank you so much. Your content is perfect for me. I appreciate that. Love the short, Joseph. Yeah, I think the short is great. It gives you a little bit an idea what's going on in one minute. I give you all the news. I don't miss a lot during the day. So you get what's going on and everywhere around the league. And sometimes you have nine news. They're all there. So why you work for next season for the, the game is like you're going to have a, a short with a score and you have 12 games. Now you have too many for one minute. I'm going to divide the game earlier and the game later. Now you get two short for the same day, but all the scores. So you get the score, the scoreboard, the players, and then after that you get also information and you get also the standing, everything like that. Great show tonight. Uh, thanks again for all your input, Coach. I hope you speak to everyone. Can I say your experience is very well? Have a great night. See you all this weekend. Christian, first of all, thank you so much. Very kind of you. And again, you are one. Make this possible and make the channel better because people like you, we found uh, one time per week or so every day make us better. So thanks again, Christian. We love you and we appreciate you. I look forward to see you the next time. Johnny said, bedtime air coach. Love your channel. You are really appreciate. Thanks again. Appreciate a lot. Exactly. A lot of people at my work watch those TikTok like short all day. Yeah, Joseph. I go there, but I know effect yet. But again, it's to show up every day. Good morning. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> We have Johnny said good night, coach. And then we have Jules Raphael said good morning. <laughs> That's what's happening. And, and New Brunswick is a bedtime. And Philippine is the morning. So it's, 11, it's about lunchtime for you, Raphael. You show up at 11 o'clock. It's about what? 11 o'clock in Philippine, I believe. So Mr. Raphael, Mini, Elaga family, and the Morales family, welcome to the Hockey Nation Live Show. Thanks again to join us. That's awesome. That's great. No, no, say good morning, Raphael. We love it, buddy. All right, Joseph, during the winter, we got Australia, Siberia, uh, of course, Finland, Sweden. But we have a people from um, Philippines, we have South America. Uh, I, I, it's crazy why we reach people all around. Yes, sir. Raphael, I think we have 12 hours. Uh, Joseph Raphael is from Philippines, but we have a guy, love the Montreal Canadian, and some from, from uh, Florida Panthers. They are coming from Nicaragua, uh, Venezuela. Uh, two of them. It's funny. I have a guy, his last name was Chris, my well, first name was Christian. My morning is unite. Yes, sir, Raphael. Maybe one day I will move in Thailand and I can be everywhere and I can do the game from everywhere. I only hope to do this full time. I see, that's another one. Justin Dubé, a new subscriber of the week and he's still here and Justin, you know, he's a part of the, the, the show now, and that's great. He participates, and he don't talk a lot, but at the end of the day, those kind of people like Justin and each one of you make this better. That's why we are grateful and thankful. Thank you so much, Justin. Have a great night, buddy. Salut, mon homme. Bonne soirée and bonne nuit, <laughs> mon homme. I think people love what you live in U.S. and English is not your only language. They can relate. Uh, was that, yeah, I, I think as, you know, if it was baseball and you don't speak Spanish, it's bad. Hockey is originally from French people and everything like that. So the connection of French, English, and they understand, they accept me. You know what I mean? And now I'm speaking the, my third language, not Spanish. That's helping more. That's just kidding. But the fact is, like, I think it's not have no problem because my, my English is not perfect. They understand because... Hockey is a French connection stuff right there. Shout out to Miss Barales. Uh, Miss M, uh, Raphael, yes, sir. 
You're welcome, Justin. And you know, one thing I try to remember is the people, their name, where they're coming from, that connection. You know what I mean? Like, I have a clubhouse in the morning with buddies, and uh, it's about authenticity, inspire, and inspire, and uh, motivation. And um, it's become a family. People know each other, right? And that's why I try to carry on that here, to be authentic with inspired people. And um, I think for me, it's a joy. I'm sorry, the third more, I was... I forgot that one. It's authenticity with joy and inspiration. That's what it is, the chat. I did not create the room if someone did it, but it's not a big room, but we become a family. People respect each other every time that. So um, that's what I try to carry on here, whatever it would be. And I don't know, when this, if ever one day we become 300, I watched today, I'd take, yeah, I was like 85 people, 90 people, it's not easy controlling your chat and follow the game. Thank you so much, Rosa. I appreciate that. Awesome, Raphael. That's great. Raphael, just curious, and your country... Can you get like YouTube channel? Can you because you right now you saw me on the Facebook page, but can you find out sign up on YouTube channel? Of course, shout out to Magalhães family from Philippines. Buenos dias, Felix. It's Thursday, Friday. It's Friday over there now. It's a Verne in Spanish. Is it Junis? No, Junis is Monday. Friday is Verne. I, I think so. <laughs> you talk about the email or the or the and I'll tap your message here. The bug bunny, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's like anything else, right? What uh, what happened in Vegas, stay in Vegas. Like, everything happened, whatever happened in the, in the locker room, stay in the locker room. So, uh, yep. You should sign up, Raphael, as a YouTube channel. That would be easier. I don't know, you know, tap. Are you talking about email or your message here? Because we don't get any message from you here. It's funny you said that because I said, oh, in our time, it's quiet. <laughs> Not a bad way. But um, in our tap, in our tap, in our tap, your last message, it was when you said 10,200 view. That was your last one. Talk about a few minutes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thank you so much, Raphael. That would be great if you can do that. That would be easier to communicate together, by the way. Raphael. I don't get anything from you in our top, by the way. Um, yeah, so, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Bug Bunny. I did not get your email and or tap. Hockey Nation Live Show, Raphael. Hockey Nation live show. 
the first email in our tap, you should get it. Joseph did it. Everybody did it. But I did not get any email from you today. Uh, Hockey Nation live show. Okay, you have other Hockey Nation, so be careful. You should find this one. Did you get it? Yes, Raphael. If you subscribe, your name will your name should appear on the screen here because I have a, a subscriber on the channel here. Not a problem, Raphael. You can text me there also um, in our tab. And I can copy your email after that. Or you can send me an email there or send me a, your email there at that number. Go, cool. sometimes I like having fun on your channel. Uh, it's, I am live for me. It's like not a problem, buddy. We love when you have great time. You can do it anytime, buddy. Yes, Raphael, just add a plus one. Yes, sir. I just got it. Awesome, and I'll tap. I will definitely reply to you. Thank you so much, Rafael. Our, our, our old man body, but still working hard every day at the gym. I try to compete with a 35 years old at the gym in the morning. He said, the gra Grandpa, he still have it. The DNA is still there. You pro no problem, Raphael. Well, we finished the night, guys. With fifty-two likes tonight, I'll be that's awesome. We. This is another milestone, 50 likes, a live stream, off season. That's pretty amazing. Thank you, Ronnie. Add the trade deadline in our tap. Because I have a good one, Rafael. The reason why in our tap, because right now I think they are set. I don't see they will do any movement over there. They're going to reevaluate the, the young kids, everything like that. 
Then after that, they go to say, what well, if it happens something, we can have this kid, this kid, this kid. The second thing they would say at the trade deadline, are we on the playoff? What the case with Ben Sharia? Can we trade another veteran players here, a Jeff Petrie or a Gallagher, to get something solid? And now the chance to get a really important pick could make a difference for Montreal Canadiens for the upcoming season. So that will be all those questions, I believe, will answer more at the trade deadline. Thank you, Raphael. I wish, but it's not. Thank you, Ronnie. It's all about the mindset, right? It's about your head. It's inside your head. That's about that way. It's just your number are different. The number, you are wrong on the number, but it's different about 34 to 50. That's the feeling I have. <laughs> uh, I will do it. I will keep it in order. Uh, because at the end of the day, If you want a good position to make the playoff, that's the first thing. When you have a playoff, everything could happen. So if you are there, the second thing, you know, that we never know. I'm sure they talk, Mac Bergevin and Ben Chariot, the agent, and they talk about number. If you decide to stay here, how much are you looking for? How many years do you want? And... Then after that, they will decide. Are you your intention? Your intention is it to go on UFA. So those and those stuff like this, it's already been done, I believe, or they're going to be happening. Because that, might, you know, what I mean, like you're always as a GM working month prior, six months, seven, eight months, and then I'm sure they are thinking right now. Everybody right now, think, watch scouting 2022. I'm watching game every day right now. So the people like them, they are the full-time job. That's what they do. Have a good night, buddy. Uh, I made a mistake. 47, not 74, sorry. <laughs> I know, all good, buddy, Ronnie. It's just a number. <laughs> Not a problem, Joseph. As a, thank you so much for everything you do, Joseph. First of all, say hi to your girlfriend also. And have a great night. I look forward to seeing you next time, buddy. I hope so, Raphael. You're welcome to jump here to stop by. Um, it's the pen running. I have like, um, it's like a building around here, but I have like, uh, The NHL network open up as a radio. Then I have all the press conference in NHL on my one computer with the NHL network TV. If you turn that, so sometime the game at 11 o'clock, I will not watching Los Angeles versus whatever it is. I will watch the next day. On this one here, it's all about CHL.TV. Hockey.tv. And also, I'm a part of the ones called the NSTAT. It's all analytic computer stat. And they show the replay of the game. HP Snipe. New subscriber. Love it. So. Um. 
Oh, they are ever quiet period of they are always accept. They are always accept. So a day off, for example, but they will take care about the 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 American Hockey League, right? Um, so the, it's it's a job, guys. 12, 14, 15 hours per day, seven days, everything like that. That's what you do, and they will always have someone to take care about something happening, everything like that. A, a, a general manager now, in uh, early days, it's really about now as a CAO. They control every stuff going on in the organization as a business operation hockey. As a hockey operation, then you have the business operation where they don't do their nothing. All right, so they have people take care about the business operation, but they will take care about you know they will not take care, but they will relate. Okay, the hotel, they have people work from that. The hotel, the plane, the tickets, the the, the money, if you know that every player right now in NHL get one hundred fifty dollars box, one fifty per day, every day. They are on the road with a hotel room free and the meal free, stay in the hotel alone. Not really. Some <clears throat> like Jeff Molson, I'll be honest with you, he will ask a report, but he's not on he's not on the on the daily basic to say something about the team. He will know what's going on, but I'm sure Josh Molson is not over. He's, bit, I'm sh- he's when he's good about Josh Molson, he's not over. Look over Mike Bergevin all the time. You never heard from him. He's quiet. He'll be there because they need him, but otherwise, you know what I mean? He's not like over Mike Bergevin a lot. But the the rules, like I said, exactly. <laughs> but the guy, like the guy from Carolina Hurricanes owners, he's involved, right? Um, Viola here for the Panthers, never. You never heard Viola. Never. So many, many, many owners are not involved. George Gillette. When he was on the Montreal Canadiens, it was all over the map. Picula and Buffalo is all over the map. The, the Chinese guy, what was the last name of the Chinese guy for the New York Islanders? Chang, I believe, all over the map. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Ronnie. Yes, so many things, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy when you think about that because. Um, I don't see it. That's why I believe this is over after that. I believe Bergevin is going to go through the year. At some point, I'm going to, I'm going to announce this tonight. I don't know when. At some point, he will announce, this is the end of my general manager. I'm going to finish all the way to the end of the season. We're going to starting to looking for a new management, a new, a new general manager. That's what I expect. Yeah, Ronnie.
And I, I think I could be, I, I think I won't be wrong. I still believe he won't, he won't do the three years. In my book, I, I believe Gillette was too involved. And, you know, it was tried to become the, the guy from Dallas called Boy Jones. You know, he tried to own, buy this team and he buy the, the soccer team in Manchester or whatever they call it. And he was trying to build team everywhere. Like, if you follow the story of Kuban with a Dallas Maverick, that's really where you, you know, most soon, when they build the center, Bell Center, or the Montreal Canadian has a hockey operation of maybe the top notch about everything. Their equipment, their everything inside where they are, where they practice at Brassard, and the sand builder and the sand belt, every player have access to amazing stuff. You know, like my buddy coach with Toronto, he would tell me like every morning he show up at six o'clock, every morning at the rink. He's always tried to beat my backpack at the door. My backup was always the first one to show up at the ring in the morning at 6 o'clock. And Steve, his first job, he said, I'm going to beat him every morning. Every morning. And he was always there. And then they have a chef to cook for them the breakfast. But I will tell you a story where they came back from one one place, I don't know, New Jersey, whatever it is, they flew, it was a storm, they came back at one o'clock in the morning, and they drive home after that, so the next morning, you still have a practice, if you turn that, and my backup, it was there at six o'clock, but Steve, he said himself, he's not going to be there. I'm going to show up later. <laughs> he drive to the rink. He show up later. And when he tried to open the door, Bacock was there. Look at him. He said, in life, in the NHL, if you want to stay in the NHL for years, never, never take day off. Always show up, whatever you show up at 2 o'clock in the morning or you go to bed at 10 o'clock, always show up early. That's what Steve got from Mike Backup. Um, I did a lot in our tap, not all of them, to be honest with you. I would say to you maybe 24 of them. Like locker room and everything like that. Yeah, see, would tell me all the kind of story. Like, you know, I have a chance to go to Mike Backock um, summer. Boy, he, he lived there now, but, uh, you know, his house in Michigan. Like, the way I'm talking to you right now, I was talking like this with my backup. He would tell me all the kind of story about Detroit Red Wings and Nicholas Lindstrom, everything like that. Uh, Ronnie, I tried to read your comments about that. Um, it depends what happened at, at the, the, in February. Where are they? That's a lot of questions we can answer at that moment. Say, so look, what well, we talk right now together with Enotap, me and you, that's why you're going to see what happened in February. 
Uh, Butch the Collector is another one guy. He's a new subscriber a couple of weeks ago. Butch, he's very quiet, but he's listening. That's how it is all about. Um, yes, the Montreal Forum, the tradition, the tradition behind everything. I've been there many times. And no parking. You have to go to the, sh the Atwater Mall beside. And I remember many times I would go there before the game, eating there, and then go to the Forum. That the the stair to go up all the way and the front, all the windows, you know what I mean? Like you have so many stories in the forum. Can know your team as a chance, you must have to move to the golden funnel. Yes, Ronnie. Um it could happen, right? Um He still have a chance. He's getting older, right? But I feel like the new direction of hockey is getting with younger. You can see right now, Totorella have no job. Bakar have no job. Uh, Boudreau have no job. Those old guys, like Ken Hitchcock after that, you know what I mean? They, they are not that third, fourth chance after that. See, Dan Quinn did not get it right away. I would not be surprised to see Dan Quinn more back in the college at some point. Um, oh, I don't say they are not good, Ronnie. You never know what could happen. Like, when you go to, this, to the playoff, everything could happen. So, to make the final, it's not easy. Look, Dallas, they never do it again. St. Louis Blues did not do it again. Right? Tampa probably did back to back, but it's always not easy. So, my point to you said, I don't, I won't say they are not good. It's just the chance to do it is harder the second time. So we'll see. By the way, we didn't mention that Carey Price was on the ice today for the first time. We talked about him yesterday, and uh, today he was on the ice um, today for the first time. Do some exercise, skating, exercise, everything like that. So it was great to see him today. Yes, sir. Um, think about this, Ronnie. Tampa Bay, are they are better this year compared to last year? Do you believe Carolina is better today like he was last year? Colorado, is it better today like he was last year? My point is, it's very hard to repeat. On my book, all three teams right now, um, you're welcome, Steve. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate that. They are there, but they are not. So the gap 
is getting closer. It's getting closer. I think Chicago is better. I think Winnipeg is better. Um, I think Florida Panthers are better. Would be would be interesting to see Edmonton if Mike Smith does the same job he did last year. Edmonton is really better. Yes, so the one Gretzky situation. Um. Montreal is it better? I'm not sure about the. Uh, I'm still not sure yet, Ronnie, until I see the beginning of the season. I think their defense is not better. The winger are better. The center. They have two better top six. But I'm not sure about third and fourth. Yeah, in our top. That's what it could be. But if ever the goaltender are better, I like we did it last season, I think they'll be fine. So... Would it be fun to watch this year? I think the special unit will be better. I think the power play will be top 10 in NHL. If not, the team don't go nowhere. Uh, they should score about 30 more goals this year. Um, but again, how Savar Ramanov can step up more to not losing the quality of Weber and the lineup. That's what I'm curious to see. Can Chariot step up and play great with Saval where that line shut down completely where Weber, um, you know what I mean? The only thing I'm good me is like, with Deva Rack now, we have a better uh, munition uh, to res to play against better team now. Without Deva Rack, I think what was so bad because we have Kokenemi as a second center and we have nobody to catch up. So now with Deva Rack, we have two good top six. We can compete with other line for over most of everybody in my book. Now, the rest, we are really good 12 forward. We're not, be, we're not much behind. Well, it's not true. The 12 forward we have, we almost equal to the 12 forward for Tampa Bay. But the first line, it's so much better at what we are. Um, oh no, I was talking me about like the 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 building in general, the location, the the inside, the the, the people was walking there. The, the, the atmosphere inside that building, um, I feel like it was closer. The, 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 the Roger Doucet, the, the, the Chinese girl behind the bench, the, there are so many stories behind that. It's a little bit like the Chicago, where the wood stair, the, the, the organic players, the piano, and everything like that. You know what I mean? Like, you stay with that kind of 
the memories forever. But I was talking about the, like, to go to the Upwater guy was so amazing to go at the forum. Just the fact to be around the forum was amazing. The Peel Street, the St. Catherine Street, the Atwater Mall, the, the McDonald cross the street on the corner. Guy, I, like, I still remember all those stuff like that. You have no parking over there. You cannot park your car there. You have to go to, uh, you know. Again, you go inside the building with all the memories, the, 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 the jersey on the top and all that kind of stuff like that. And the way they did it, stand up behind the, the, the second floor. Gali, a number one draft, they can get a number one. I'm not sure you're running right now. We have to remember the last year we have over 11 overtime loss. We did not really play to play three. We can win those because the player will get better. Yeah, I, I think, you know, tap, you know I mean, we start with 0-9 or something like that. Uh, I think we can win more now. That's what you have an offensive team. More your offensive team is better, better chance you can to win. You cannot win with defensive players, right? You, you cannot win with Dano. But you can win with Suzuki. You can win with Caulfield. You can win with Hoffman. But I think for that, you need also a, a puck movement defenseman that will help. Because after Petri, I think you better to play with three forward. <laughs> yeah, the only way Ronnie I can see to guy like Morgan Riley is to get a UFA way. I still believe they can get Gallagher with another players to get a defenseman from Colorado. And I still believe Colorado is listening because they are close to win the Stanley Cup. When you are close to win a Stanley Cup, you pay the price. That's what Tampa Bay did for the last two, three years. They gave up the first round pick. They got Blake Coleman. They gave out the first round pick. They get David Saval. But not because of them they win, but they add this and the recipes of the meal and the meal become better. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't see him to play over play in our tap. What I'm concerned about him is consistency, where he have an amazing, great start, 28 game, was a top five defenseman, already 10 goals, and then he stuck with zero goal with minus 13 for about 16 games. Excuse me. So to play that level, I think you need a three great pair of defensemen. And that's what I said. Romana was going to be better this year. You have Shariat and Manson and Romanov. Now they have Petri, Saval. Then you need another one of that. Can Kulak can handle the right one? I don't like when Romanov is on the RD. Should keep Romanov. Can Wyman can pick it up there? Can another rookie can get there? Nolander is the left side. If you, uh, we wish we, have, we, we have more better R RD. At that time, we have Hans Yulsen. Then after that, we got Fleury. But Petri cannot run at 82 game plus playoff at 25 minutes plus per game. He's 33 years old now. That's what someone talked tonight about 20 goal. I don't see it. Yeah, it's about management, right? 
What made Tampa great, it was the six defensemen can play. Now, if you are 22, 23, 24, we talk about another way. But we talk about the guys right now, we have 30 years old plus, Weber and Petrie. You cannot hang in there for 26 minutes, 27 every night. You know, like, McCall can do it. Fox can do it. Queen Hughes can play like that. You can see Minor, Matthews, McDavid, Tressel, all forward play over 20 minutes. That's crazy. Uh, yes, but some of the goal he got, it was usually on the left side where Caulfield is. Um, so f oh, he got a goal also on the rush, right? So for me, I believe he would have more pass this year to pass the puck to Hoffman or Caulfield, if you on that, at score goal. Uh, he scored 12 last year in 56 game. I see more than number 12 to 15 max. Can he get a double digit? Yes. Have a good night, Butch. We're going to get shut down also the next couple of minutes, buddy. Thank you so much, buddy. Have a good night. Talk to you tomorrow. But yes, um, in our tap. Um, because he will, he will request $5 million, then he's 34 years old. We have already players as a defenseman at that age. So he's also another left D. And it's congestion on the LD. If Martinez is an RD, we talk about another way. But because he's an LD, did not help Montreal Canadian. He's 34 years old, and I think it's too much. The good news for him, he got the longevity of the contract. That's an excuse in our tap, because you're tired now, you want to leave. <laughs> But me too. It's time to go. I have a 5.30 wake up call tomorrow morning. And then we have to be at the gym at 6.30. Then I have to create my video for the Toronto. And then after that, no show tomorrow morning. So an excuse. I have to be at the ring at 10.30. I'll be there until 3. Come back home. Then prepare the show for tomorrow night. So not many video tomorrow, unfortunately. But I can't wait to see you tomorrow night, guys, at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to be back for another great show of the Power Play. Until then, we just want to remind you one more thing. Of course, you have greatness inside of you. Have an amazing, great night, everybody. Sweet dream. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another great show. Thanks, InnoTap. And for the rest of people around, maybe Ronnie fall asleep right now, InnoTap.
Have a good night, Rick. Anytime, Steve. Good night, Danny. Oh, oh, oh.